Hi everyone, this is a uh, Well What Do You Think channel, and this is our uh, segment Well Want to Fight About It, where we fight about our favorite movies. And here's our contestants. How's it going, guys? Me, Amir, back in the current champ right now. No, you're not. Uh, I'm Owen. Owen. So I just won. So I'm gonna come back to win a second. Alvin, uh, haven't won yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these are our contestants, and we have some really awesome questions today. So we got uh, round one being best Star Wars character. We got a crossover the Transformers with another universe. Mm -hmm. uh, introduce the X-Men to the MCU. That's the one I'm personally excited for because I'm a big X-Men fan. I'm really wearing an X-Men t-shirt. So you guys are going to try real hard to convince me on why your pitch is better than everyone else's. It's going to be a good round. For sure. And we got worst mm -hmm. sequel and prequel. So we got some fun questions. We're here to argue about our movies. And uh, let's start off with round one. Uh, Alvin, er, Alvin, we're going to start with you. <laughs> we're going to start with you, Alvin. Nice. Okay. Uh, what is the best Star Wars character? Best Star Wars character. Best Star Wars character. All right, that's a doozy. Because okay, in my opinion, I, have, I think I have no. I think I know what you guys picked. I think it's pretty obvious what Alvin chose. Probably. Go ahead. Jar Jar Binks. No, okay. It's uh, <laughs> it was Luke Skywalker. Of course. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he just encompasses all of Star Wars. I, I don't. When someone says Star Wars, the first thing that comes to my mind is obviously Luke Skywalker, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, with the Last Jedi and all that, it, the character has been kind of marred I guess mm -hmm. but I think that's what makes him a, stained yeah the best character because it shows that he's not <laughs> as it's guys can I are you guys are you guys okay this is <laughs> open, opening you, no argue yeah no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Right. Well, Amber talks so I would figure why are you talking yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead Alvin yeah, thank you thank go you ahead. yeah I think the last Jedi kind of represents you know nobody's perfect even though you're a Jedi Knight you're not perfect right his story in Star Wars kind of just makes him a really really great interesting character right he starts from this farm boy on Tatooine and he ends up he ends up you know a Jedi a Jedi master without having yeah. to use his lightsaber and he saves like the galaxy from tyranny twice right twice first order and then uh, the Empire okay yeah that's a good answer it's all right yeah go ahead is, is, uh, Owen yeah no uh, cool choice I know a little obvious um, I think I'm gonna go for the Star Wars character that's kind of bringing everyone together right now, where there's not this divide and like, oh, is he actually oh, man, acting the way man. he's acting? I'm gonna go with the Mandalorian. Mandalorian of course, he's a Mando, man. Din Djarin. I feel like right now Star Wars is in a really good place because of the Mandalorian and the way he's done to what he's done for the future of the franchise. I feel like, I mean, I don't usually watch Star Wars movies or content like that, but I love Mandalorian. Of course, and I love watching him with interact with Baby Grogu. I like to see more of the side of like um, more about the the history of Mandalore mm -hmm. and it gets to you to like a more grounded area of Star Wars where it's not these big space battles but like more of a western type of feel. I think yeah. the Mandalorian mm -hmm. encapsulates a really cool side of Star Wars that mm -hmm. we haven't seen much of before. Nice mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good. You guys had very good picks. Luke, Sky Luke Skywalker, Jin Darren, good picks. <laughs> nice. good picks. But I thought it was pretty obvious. My answer for best Star Wars character, I'm going with Galen Merrick. You guys know who that is? Yeah. You know who that is? Who is that? That is Star Killer, otherwise known as The Apprentice. Is that my? Was that not legal to you? That's legal. He's, he's legends. <laughs> he's not, not, canon. not canon. It's the not best Star Wars character. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No, he's, so he's a fun character. He's, cool. he's yeah, a great he's character. A so yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Galen Merrick, otherwise known as Star Killer, because because yeah. I thought, oh, when you're looking into Star Wars, <laughs> I think it is so plagued with having characters that are the chosen one, never having any struggle, being the ones that no, they have unlimited power. But with Galen <laughs> Merrick, he has the most tragic backstory of any Star Wars character. With Anakin, he's the chosen one. He starts off with the good side. But with Galen Merrick, we see essentially a little boy whose whole family is massacred and is uh, raised by the worst thing you can be in life, raised by hate. He is raised by Darth Vader, raised by the Empire. And then he has this amazing, amazing arc. Mm -hmm. so literally, he becomes a hero. He was way more of a hero than Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, they ruined with Last Jedi. And Jin Darren, he's not even on the same level. But yeah, I'm going Galen Merrick. That's so, cool. I, I, I so like, fight about it, guys. Yeah, I like how you chose a video game because we had the least amount to like go by. So yeah, mm. like it's cool. I, I do remember playing that on the Wii and thinking, oh wow, this is really cool. You only like, had it on the Wii? Oh yeah, because I didn't play anything else. Okay. I was like, oh, you get to force juggle him and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you because know? when I was eight, it was a really good story. You were thinking, yeah. And then once you get older, you're like, oh, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of boring. It's just an apprentice that we have to watch the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so we're not, I'm not talking about gameplay. I'm talking about um, I know, I know. You're not yeah, so, obviously talking about yeah, gameplay. As an eight year old, of course, you're not thinking about the story. You're not really thinking. But with Galen Merrick, oh, there's so much more. When I was going, going into his lore, I was like, man, that is so tragic. So how I did thought, you find this lore? Did, were you like looking at different aspects of the character, like a yeah, book so, or a manual? So or the reason, did you, with, stuff you didn't find out while playing no, with, the game? With, with video games, you're so much more connected to the character. 
You essentially live as them. You watch Luke Skywalker. You lot. You watch the Mandal- Mandalorian. But you live Galen Merrick. I think we can all agree. You live as him. And with uh, the Apprentice, essentially, he has the most tragic backstory. You can't even compare. He is uh, Luke Skywalker, raised by the greatest Jedi of all time, Obi Wan Kenobi. I don't even know anything about raised. him. He, he died within two hours of meeting Luke. Yeah. Are you serious? He died on the Death Star. Luke, he wasn't Luke. raised by. He was raised by. Aunt, he was raised by Uncle Owen. Owen. He was raised by yeah. Uncle Owen. Uncle and Owen. And he also died. Yeah, when he was yeah. 18. It's not as tragic when a five-year-old is I indoctrinated. I don't know why. And Jin Darren, I don't even know anything about him. Uh, just, <laughs> also, his family was massacred when he was a kid by droids. Uh, how yeah. old was he? Damn. He was like four or some shit like that. And then he became a... <laughs> what happened after that? Oh, after that? Um, was he raised He was by, raised by the, a certain aspect of Mandalore. Oh, shoot. That sounds kind of similar to your character. I know. Is it, mine's is actually really cool. Mine's actually really this cool. This is actually canon. Tra- We're not talking about canon. <laughs> I think what makes Again, sense. Alvin, I think that's your... Alvin's ultimate superpower is uh, talking technicality. We're not talking about technicality. That is technicality. We're not talking about canon. Best Star Wars character. Okay, and I bet you in five years... We're gonna get a Disney Plus show on Star Killer, and you're gonna be wearing a shirt right now in five years of him. You're gonna have a pop Funko of Star Killer. He is the the best character in Star Wars, hands down. He is what Anakin, what they wanted Anakin to be, because Anakin was such a good character. Episode nine ruined him, where he's no longer the chosen one. He does not save the galaxy. I have, I have a question. I like what Alvin keeps mentioning. Canon. Canon. Um, so uh, how does that feel to you that Apprentice was, was stricken from Canon? Why do you think they struck him from Canon? Because Disney bought uh, LucasArts, they bought Lucasfilm, and they're like, oh, okay, we want, we don't have any, I guess, rights to it, like, oh, we're just going to make our own shit. And also, the reason why they didn't do it is because he's a mature character. They can't have mature story arcs I think Star Wars can be mature. They can, but they choose yeah. not to. <laughs> wow. Starkiller is when they're mature. I think... Starkiller, they massacred... Do you remember when he literally blinded Rom Koda? Do you know how fucking I sad that is? I game, because yeah. that seems like a dumb game. Like, like, yeah. It was fun. Again, I mean, that's how the game was. It was really fun, yeah. just... So what? What? Uh, give me an emotional scene with the Mandalorian, other than when he's him forced, when he's talking forced, to Grogu. When, so in the first season, he does not like droids because he has this horrible interaction with the droids, mm-hmm. right? He doesn't like the droids. Have you seen? You haven't I seen. Have, have I you? have not. All right. So let me describe seen. the scene to you. So uh, he's on the brink of death, right? Mm-hmm. And as his 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 oath is, he can't take off his helmet. Mm-hmm. So he's forced with this, this this impasse where he either can take off his helmet so this droid can save his life because he's he was shot somewhere like in the neck area. Or he can keep it on and still be like a, like a true Mandalorian in his eyes. Mm-hmm. But he wants to be there for baby Grogu, and he wants to save him, and he wants to save his life and actually be there for him when he grows up. So he actually takes off his helmet, which is a big thing for him, because the mm-hmm. entire show he doesn't take it off. And in this one moment, he finds himself trusting a droid, which he had never has before, because that's what baby Grogu did. To Who him. was the droid? It was just a random droid. Mm-hmm. It was a droid uh, that he had met like earlier in the season, mm-hmm. right? It was IG-11. Like, yeah. Whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you. Dude, I'm just... <laughs> I don't know the droids. Man. A, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mando's good, but I think Mando doesn't even hold a candle. To, can I agree? Luke Skywalker's yeah. way better than Luke Mandalorian. Luke Skywalker walked, so your characters can run. The whole series started with my guy, dude. That's if true. if this if Luke Skywalker wasn't even created, you guys wouldn't even be able to say Din Djarin and Galen Merrick, right? Come on. I mean, so that's, yeah, that's a good point. Luke's cool. But... Like he's a cool. Um, what do they call him? What What are they? Vanilla. Vanilla. Very vanilla. Vanilla. Based basic. Character. Like like wow. that's really cool. I want an exact reason why you, you guys both think Luke is vanilla. What exactly no, so I think Luke's Luke a great character, and, and I think everything that they did with him in Last Jedi was really good. I, I thought that was actually awesome. I will say I'm a big fan of Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Last Jedi is actually pretty good. It has value. But yeah. when, I, when I look at Last Jedi and compare him to the beginning, I think the, the, the worst part of Luke is the beginning aspect. He's just... The no, character that has the, is the, the chosen it's a, one. It's a character arc. He's, he doesn't know he's the chosen one, right? He's just a farm boy from Tatooine. This dude, Galen Merrick, like, what's interesting about him? I don't, I don't. His whole family was massacred. He, he was like raised by Darth Vader. Vader. He seems like he's a whole powerful it's, being. You're saying that like it's like it's very unique in the Star Wars universe. He's very one note. Like you don't have other No, he's not one note. He only has backstories. So he has the two lightsabers and he can spring out a Star Destroyer with the Force. The clone has two lightsabers. I think you're just really encapsulated by how powerful he is. No, no, I don't care about the No. That's awesome. And you're going by this tragic backstory like not every character in Star Wars has a tragic backstory. You're saying his is the worst? I don't know why you have to define his as the worst when others have lost their entire family. So the reason why I think Galen Merrick is so important and such a crucial dramatic character is because when you look at Gamer, what is he searching for in life? He wants acceptance. He wants a father's love. That's what Darth Vader is him. He is his father. He didn't have his dad. The dad was murdered. But you know what? He had Darth Vader. And there's an amazing scene in, 
in uh, Force Awaken, uh, Force Unleashed, where essentially they're going to be betraying uh, Darth Sidious. But then the moment that Darth Vader finds that they're tracked, Dar uh, Darth Vader is a little coward, and he he turns on Galen Merrick. He betrays him, and then you see a uh, uh, stabbed Galen Merrick. He's like, uh, please, we can defeat him together. And he's really begging to his dad, please, let's work together. I love you. And the dad says, no. The dad says, no. You can't say anything about Grogu. You can't say anything about Luke Skywalker. Sure. He's just white bread. I really love that. That was a really good scene. I want both of you guys to give me kind of an emotional scene of what makes your character so good. Because I haven't heard enough good about luck. Mando, but it's I don't know enough about Mando. So mm -hmm. really paint me a picture of who the Mandalorian is. Because I, I know Luke and I know Apprentice. So what makes Mandalorian the best Star Wars character? I think, for one, to be the best Star Wars character, you kind of have to have this agreement with the fandom. For me, personally, I feel like you have to have a whole backing behind it because it's such a huge array of people that love this series, it's hard to get everyone on board. For Luke, I feel like we don't have everyone on board. There's people who are mad about The Last Jedi. There's people who say, that's not my Luke. That's not the way he would act. That's true. And now we have people who are like you who, who, who say that's exactly what he's like. So I think at some point throughout the series, there is a... There is, um, it's a struggle. There was a struggle between because, that. Yeah, it's like, oh. Not everyone is a struggle between it's, light and dark. Like Luke. Not necessarily. Yeah, it's, it's a like struggle Luke. between consistency. Yeah, because they don't know if that's really what Luke would act like. Mm -hmm. For you, I feel like no one really cares about this character. They no don't one, know no. the character. It wasn't I, most no, no, no. iconic. We've it wasn't all, most uh, followed. They're all the most followers. We're I, talking about No, that. we've all played this game. We all know this character. And I think it's a really cool story. It it's is. awesome, but it's not like a Star Wars, definitive Star Wars character that we can all look up to and, and, and like. It's like a side mission throughout the Star Wars universe. The Star Wars, the Star Wars universe is so grand and, and amazing. Yeah. Where we look at a character like this who isn't canon, you're right, he isn't canon. Yeah, see, it's kind of hard to look at it at, uh, the, at the lens of Star Wars when it's not even... It's not even part of the same universe. It was point. though. I've heard so, enough about Apprentice. I, I need. Yeah, I need I'm you getting to it. I'm yeah. getting to it. I wanted to, I wanted to shit yeah. on these two shit yeah. bags first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think what the <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> the is I think after Episode Nine, everyone was really disappointed in Star Wars, right? I, I, there was no clear, concise way to have the whole fan group be like they're they're, they're they weren't satisfied. Mm -hmm. And then the show, The Mandalorian, comes out, and every single person is back on this. Star Wars hype train. It literally revives the franchise because we all love this character so much. We get to see more of the Mandalorian and their culture, which is a really cool part of Star Wars and the actual universe. We get to see how it's a, his subgroup is like different from other Mandalorians because we see other Mandalorians for that are actually taking off their helmets. So his is like a separate uh, cultist group, and it's cool because it actually ties into the TV show. So it's like, oh, well, how does this how does this affect like the people of Mandalore? Because we see things like the dark saber that was taken over by like. Darth Maul and the Clone Wars or something like that. It really paints a picture of how like the history of this one item that was given to the Mandalorian in season two, mm -hmm. how it like how it goes from separate person to person and it meets him. And we see his change throughout the entire show where he's this stone cold killer, he's a he's a bounty hunter and he is given this mission to pick up this baby mm -hmm. and to deliver it. And he can't he, he, he delivers a baby but he can't find himself to like actually leave him there. He he feels this connection to this baby. So he goes back and saves him and Against everything that he's ever done before that, his code and all that, he saves the baby and he finds a way to give him back to his people, the mm -hmm. Jedi. Are we better arguments or no? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to my arguments. Can I interject? Go ahead. Okay, so I think that's actually a lot of good stuff. But part of me thinks, like, oh, do you think uh, Mandalorian would be popular if it, wasn't to ha if it wasn't for the cute little baby? I think Baby Yoda is I'll such a, say a it cheap ties in shot. too heavily into the different parts of the canon with the TV shows and the comic books. I think... It's enjoyable if you don't know that, but also if you do know that, you kind of get that extra feeling of like gratitude. Where so it's, it's like, cool both ways. You know, but don't you think? Oh, people I think, wouldn't I think care about him if it wasn't for the baby. Well, I, I, would, like, I, would, I would, I would so argue that. Kind of so, so your argument is Baby Yoda is a crutch. That's what you're saying. I think, I think people only like him because of the cute plush. He says that, but the best episode of the Book of Boba Fett was just the Mandalorian by himself. He did not interact with Baby Grogu once that entire episode. Uh, it was going to go with him I've, getting the no, baby back? He didn't interact with the baby at all. That entire episode. So the episode with the dark saber, Baby Yoda's barely in it. No, no, no. And the Book of Boba, Book the of Book Boba, of Boba Fett. Fett. There but was if it's a turd, before that. Yeah, cause it's in if it's a diamond and a turd, I mean, you're saying it's the best episode. Didn't I'm pretty sure Alvin said, oh, that show was dog shit. 
So yeah. like, oh, but it's the best well, episode of the shit series. I'm not talking about the series. I don't know why you're bringing up the series. Yeah, he's already Mandalorian. <laughs> you brought it up, but... I, I think, brought it up yeah. because you're saying so, that the people like the Mandalorian just because he's with Baby Yoda. I, so, so I, I, I heard you saying Baby Yoda's a crutch, which yeah. uh, I can understand. Another crutch is also the fan service with the Mandalorian, especially in Season 2. I felt mm-hmm. like Season 2 was just a who's who of the Star Wars universe. Every episode of Season 2 had someone from the wider universe, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, Whatever, right? I'd rather get that than Luke Duke and M- Milk Kitties <laughs> <laughs> in episode 8. I would much rather get fan service. All and right, at least we right. get fan service because you, you're doing something like that. That's why. You have Luke. Maybe why Luke is good because. I want to, I'm gonna ask all of you this question. What is your I'm gonna ask you all the question. What does your character provide to the greater scope of the Star Wars universe? So, Alvin, we're gonna start with yeah, you. Yeah, we're gonna start yeah with right. You. Well, I have, I have been, so, the most talked about thing in Mandalorian season two obviously was Luke Skywalker when he came in at the end of season two. Yeah, and right. His presence, guy. how bad he looked, but the, just the fact that they brought back young Luke, mm-hmm. right? And I think. Also, you say the best episode of Book of Boba Fett was the one with Mando. I think it was the one with Luke, Grogu, Ahsoka, Cad Bane. That's the one after that, right? Mm-hmm. And that also had a presence of Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. So obviously, they're still, they still want to use this character, even though we already know the ending of this character from yeah. The Last Jedi, or The Rise of Skywalker, I guess. Mm-hmm. So there's a reason why they keep going back to Luke. And obviously, you know, everyone <laughs> loves that episode because it kind of shows people what they wanted to see in Luke, where he sets up a Jedi Academy, mm-hmm. right? And he's training people, and he's just kind of like that stoic Jedi. Right? Are they are they going to keep it where he's going to massacre the, the, the school, or like Kylo burns it down, are they going to still do that? or Because uh, when I saw the clips of Luke, it, it seemed like that was classic Luke, and it yeah. seems so different than Last Jedi Luke. So part of me is, thinking, is that, are they even, are they retconning? That, that's the thing, is that when that episode came out of the season two of The Mandalorian, there were still people divided on Luke. And like, yeah, oh, that's I my Luke. So. That, there no, was, no, 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 there was actually people like, oh, that's my Luke. And then at the same time, they brought up the argument like, oh, people don't appreciate the Luke from The Last yeah. Jedi. There's still that divided so, fan. I, think I have a question. So, you, so you're saying in Mandalorian, in Book of Boba Fett, Luke is, uh, he's starting a Jedi Academy now? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying, you're saying that they're course correcting episode seven or eight. Or I'm not saying they're they're telling the story of Luke. They're filling okay. in the gaps. I'm okay. not saying they're course correcting, obviously, because you know things can change within twenty or thirty years. Yeah, from that's true. Boba Fett to okay. Last Jedi. So so we're gonna go into closing arguments. Uh, we're gonna start with you, Amir. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna give you about let's say a minute and a half to. Uh, Damn. It's a long, you know, twenty. Uh, twenty sure. seconds. How much you got? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna give you. you. We're gonna give you a closing argument. Tell why um, Apprentice is the best Star Wars character and try to. Yeah, Tell I'll, I'll, I'll why inter- intertwine it with them. I think uh, Mandalorian, very cool character, but it's such an, a layup in that, like, oh, you don't really like to develop him. He just looks cool because he looks like Boba Fett, and you have uh, beautiful, you have the baby Grogu. <laughs> so that's obviously an easy layup. Luke is cool, but you didn't mention anything with him training Rey. That could have been so cool. But then they ruined it all in last uh, episode nine when he just throws a lightsaber. So, like, oh, that was episode everything. Eight. What? That was episode eight when he threw the lightsaber. That was episode nine. No, oh, oh, okay, so he throws an episode eight and then he catches like, oh, this is a delicate lightsaber, we shouldn't do it. So they essentially undid everything that they did in Last Jedi. So they kind of fucked uh, Luke and he's literally a piece of shit. But with um, uh, Apprentice, he is such what? a good character because their only argument against him is, oh, he's not in canon. Okay, no, so no, what? No, he no, was no. canon at one point, but he has such a tragic backstory. And he people forget, he. you know what the ending is of the game? Do you guys remember the ending? Don't he dies anything. for the resistance. He pays for his sins. I don't know, you're... Uh, Man- uh, Mando, he's a racist piece of shit towards robots. Do- are we gonna ever see him pay for his sins and all the robots he's hated and probably killed? No. With Star Killer, he 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 was a piece of shit. He was a bad person. He worked for the Empire, but you know what he did? He essentially uh, helped the the resistance or the um, uh, rebellion become a thing. He brought down that epic Star Destroyer. He fought Palpatine. You know what? He died, and that was sad. Oh. Whoa. Uh oh. Power out. I don't think so. Blackout. Which one's the light? Oh, it's because the bag is covering it. Oh, okay. That's nice. serious. That was pretty uh, dramatic. That was. Check the camera. Make sure it's like still in focus, I would say. Yeah. Just yeah. put okay. the bag on the ground or something. Right. Good call. Okay. So we just had a little blackout, but I think that was Galen Merrick talking to me. And he honestly said thank you for continuing his legacy because he's a great character. He dies for resistance and... He essentially paid for his sins. He has the ultimate arc as a character. He starts as a piece of shit person, that's literally the apprentice of Darth Vader, and he literally dies as no, I did the wrong thing, and I'm gonna make a difference. You can't say that about Mandalorian. He has, 
He has literally done nothing that's even on that scale. Luke, such a cool character, inconsistent. That's my my closer. Good closer. Yeah. I, I enjoy the way you Appreciate try him, and I enjoy the way you try and like boost the way that we look at. What was it, Star Killer? Gail and Merrick. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think to be the definitive best Star Wars character, you kind of have to, like I said earlier, you have to bring everyone together. Um, I don't think he quite does that because he doesn't do anything. He, he's not as original as you think. I feel like his tragic backstory, you keep, get, you keep bagging on that. But we, like I said, we have plenty of char- Star Wars characters who have tragic backstories, so he's not original in that sense. Mm-hmm. It's really cool that he's trained by, by Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't get me wrong, that's awesome. But I just think that that's not, not going to make him the greatest Star Wars character. You talk about how Din Djarin doesn't have this cool arc. Din Djarin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he talks about how Din Djarin doesn't have this really cool arc, but I already explained to you what he has to do in the first season where he's, he takes off his helmet, how mm-hmm. it's a big part of the show. Mm-hmm. So he does that to save baby Grogu. In the entire second season, he's trying to get him back to his home, something he would never do before. He's a bounty hunter. He, 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 he kills for money, you know? or He, he, he does all that redemption shit. Redemption arc. Mm-hmm. It's his redemption arc. And at this point, your story's over, and it, it, that's cool, but Din Djarin is still going. And we're going to get a third season, and I think everyone's really excited to see what he's going to do next. Because he's got Baby Grogu back. We want to see what's going to happen next with him and interacting with Baby Grogu. Maybe he's going to go back to Luke, and maybe they'll fix his character along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I say that yeah, we, have, we, have, we have so much potential with The Mandalorian. His story's not finished. Your story's finished. It has nothing to do with the entire Star Wars universe. So at that point, it's not something Good. that we're going to think about when we think of Star Wars. When you want to think of Star Wars, you want to think of you want to think when you want to think of the best Star Wars character. You want to think of Star Wars. I don't really think of Star Wars with that. I think um, of just this cool action character. Yeah, but you might be a fad. Like uh, Star Killer will live on. But no, that's you're, you're you you were a fad at one point. No one's talking about this guy. Everyone's still talking about Mandalorian and what he's going to save. He's going to save the future of Star Wars. That's why he's the greatest character of Star Wars. He's saving the future. Mm-hmm. Right, I, mean, I really need you to hit it on because I've mainly heard them two talk. You picked yeah, yeah. Luke Skywalker. Why is he the greatest Star Wars character? And, uh, I was mainly focused on if, people on Luke. If Starkiller was such an interesting character, why didn't they bring him back into canon? Because, you know, they're bringing all these different aspects I can't of argue legends. legal. I'm, I'm yeah, saying, don't worry, don't worry about don't, uh, We've shut. heard enough <laughs> of, of him not being, yeah, not yeah, being yeah, canon. Yeah. I, I, I know that already. So They keep bringing up Last Jedi, and obviously that's a big elephant in the room. Uh, I do think, you know, after 30 years or something, obviously you're going to change. You're not going to be the same person 30 true. years from now, right? Yep, yep. We don't know that. It's true. So I think just Luke represents the the everything about Star Wars, about like redemption, temptation. He gets tempted by the dark side, but he doesn't he doesn't fall to the dark side, right? And he, he represents like this hope. He is the new hope, right? Do I keep going? Uh, I want to say one more thing after okay. the end. Okay. okay. We're allowed extra. Uh, uh, what, is it long? No, the very short. What? what? I would argue since he's talking about this apprentice type arc with it, or arc with um, what's the name, Star Killer? Galen with, Merrick. With Galen Merrick and Darth Vader, I okay. would say the Darth Maul's uh, arc in the Clone Wars as an apprentice to Darth Sidious was better than that. He did it better. Mm. I don't think so, but I'll let it go. Let, uh, go back. Uh, let, yeah, back yeah, 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 I think with the Mandalorian, you don't really. It doesn't kind of. You have to know all these different things about the universe in order to. You know, get the full thing out of the Mandalorian. For Luke, you just watch episodes four, five, and six. You know his arc. You don't have to watch the Last Jedi, right? You can just watch whatever you want. Four, five, and six. Boom. Mm-hmm. That kind of represents his character right there. Starts off as someone who's not powerful, just a okay. farm boy on Tatooine. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of hopeful to get off. He gets off world, and then in Empire Strikes Back, he's like, ch- like challenged with darkness, mm-hmm. temptation. Darth Vader wants him to join to the dark side, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. And he finds out that his dad is the most. He's he's like Hitler. Right, he's the Hitler of the galaxy, yeah. and he's like, he's like, damn, like that's what do I do? And then in Return of the Jedi, he comes back. He's like, nope, I'm not I'm gonna be Hitler Jr. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take down the Nazi regime, and he does it, right? Okay. And I think that's really a good message. Just being, you know, being always be hopeful, and then just don't give in to the darkness. Okay, he forgave so that's, Hitler though. What? what? He forgave Hitler at the end, which wasn't a good message. It was that is the end of the round. It was his actual dad, not this fake cannon. <laughs> <Sure. Yeah. laughs> that is the end of the round. That round went on a little bit longer. It went on pretty long, but I wanted you guys to, to go at it because I think you, you guys had some good stuff to say. Because this is a big, important question. And I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm actually pretty 
Uh, this is a tough one. I think everyone's closing did really good. Owen, oh, you got me with the milk titty. That was really funny. <laughs> that was really funny. Cool, yeah. that was I really thought you were fan service. That was that. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't argue against that. Yeah, <laughs> so, that, was, that, was, that, that was really good. You look flabbergasted. Yeah, too. Like, I, was I like, wish he didn't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really funny. This is a really tough one because it had Ralph and he did. Luke is iconic, no one's perfect. He went from a, a rat piece of shit to a Jedi master to a two time badass. That was awesome. Right, that was really cool. good. Right. That's true. And I gotta say your your uh, your argument style, man, that was beautiful. Literally, you painted me a beautiful picture of Apprentice. You really Thank did. You. you really did. Only uh, I didn't know anything about Mandalorian, but mm -hmm. you were making me interested on, on I feel like I had the hardest crutch because you don't know anything about my character. And, and I think you did a you did actually really good. He uh, you did a really good job of getting me on the Mandalorian. I think mm -hmm. I love that you said um you need a character that everyone can be behind, mm -hmm. and that's and that's him. And he also kind of reboot. He kind of revived the franchise after episode nine because that was just so controversial. So that was you, that was really good. That was a good part. Point. That was a good point. Uh, like Amir said, begging his dad for his love and then uh, getting betrayed by his dad. That was really good. Uh, uh, Luke, Luke they, uh, Hitler Jr. That was really good. His dad's Hitler. He did really good. He, he fixed the franchise. I don't know. This is, a, this is a really tough one. This is a really really tough one. I think. I'm gonna have to put it down probably more so to. I think Amir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they're not. No, no, no. I'm just. I'm oh, not, no, no. Oh, I'm saying this. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. I think I'm gonna have to narrow it down. I think to right now, Amir and Alvin. I think they did a good job. Oh, and you, you, you did really good with Mandalorian. Maybe it's just because it's, and I don't know him enough. Yeah. I think your your pitch was that he did revive Sword Friend. It was really good. Everyone likes him. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they did get Amir though that Apprentice is done and he has no greater scheme to the Star Wars universe. That was a really good pitch or a really good knock at you and you didn't really... Mm -hmm. That's so bold! <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault for choosing that, that character. Is so... That's your fault for choosing that character. Yeah, you, you didn't, you didn't really... Please finish. Please finish. You didn't, you didn't really... You dragged it out. It's so suspenseful. You didn't yeah, address... Yeah. <laughs> we have four more rounds. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't address that, that his, his story is good but he's, he's done in the whole Star Wars universe and... I don't know. If you don't give it to you're gonna be the shit. If you don't get, I had the best argument. There's no way. Just say you're big. I'll give it to Amir. Yes, yeah, oh, what? Argument was, argument was, I need to hear more from you. Yes. I think, there you go, baby. I don't know. That was a Man. good round. That was a good fight. That was, that was a really good round. 30 minute really round. That was, that, how long was that? 30 minutes. Minutes. Serious? 27 minutes. Oh, god damn. I know. 27 that, minutes? I didn't have my timer on me. That's what? Like, yeah, that was a long round. It's it a good fight. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. That was a long round. This would be uh, the director's cut for right. sure. Okay, so Amir's at one point. That was a really good round for him. I made it go longer because I wanted to see it. Star Wars is good. Mm -hmm. Everyone go passionate. So we're going to do round two, crossover, the Transformers of another universe. Owen, we're going to start with you. Oh, cool. All right. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to paint you the picture. I'm going to I'm gonna pitch you the, my opening scene, actually. Okay, cool. I'm going to close my eyes. Okay, so we're on Cybertron. It's going to start just like Bumblebee did. And we're going to get all the characters we love to see. We're going to get Optimus. We're going to get Jazz. We're going to get Bumblebee. We're going to get yes. Ironhide. We're going to get all these cool Decepticons. We'll get Soundwave, Megatron. We'll see this huge fight going on. And this, this is going on for like a good 10, 15 minutes. We'll see Dinobots. We'll see Metroplex. We're, I'm just naming out cool Transformers because we're getting all the fan service that mm -hmm. we want at this point. And then a separate group... Four Decepticons and three Autobots are fighting in this separate part of the city. And then this building collapses on top of them. And we don't know where that explosion came from because they're, very, they're fairly separated from the rest of the, the Transformers. And it falls on them, they're all getting up, and they realize that their weapons are disabled. And they can't transform. So at this point it's just a fist fight, it's a brawl. And as they're going at it, there's this big flashing light. And it cuts to black. We see all these Transformers wake up on a planet. The planet of the predators. They they have been picked up from the predators and they put on this planet to be hunted by the ultimate predators and their ultimate weapons. A, with good. their weapons disabled and with their ability to transform disabled. So now these Autobots and Decepticons have to team up with each other to get off the planet and to fight off these predators without the weapons that they have. I like the, pitch. Size? the predators have super weapons. I they, like, have, they have big armor oh, armor gotcha. built. Mm -hmm. uh, I like your pitch it's on awesome. Amor. Give us your pitch. Alright, so um uh, I thought uh, Transformers is such a cool uh, franchise, and I, the way I wanted to kind of approach mine is more of like a kaiju movie. So I went with uh, Transformers meets Godzilla. I think that could be a really, really cool one, because uh, I guess I'll paint you a little bit of my uh, premise. So essentially, it's gonna, uh, all of humans are wiped off the face of the earth. It's just essentially now a planet of uh, Godzilla, Mothra, all these awesome kaiju, 
and essentially uh, transform like a Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Jazz, Mudflap kids. They're all back. They're all back. Mudflap. Mud mud it's a joke. It's a joke. A joke. They're pieces of shit. The racist but, ones. No, it, that was a joke. Um, they, they're essentially now back on Earth, and they're they're trying to take over planet Earth from the kaiju. Because essentially, with I didn't want to have to worry about any shitty human subplot. <laughs> so it's just big badass uh, monster versus big badass robot. So that's my pitch. Okay, Alan. My pitch: Transformers versus GI Joe. Mm. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. I think. They're both owned by Hasbro. They're both big cartoons in the 80s. Bring it back now. You know, we just had the reboot with Snake Eyes. And then now they had Bumblebee. I think now is the perfect time to cross them over. I think the same company owns them, Paramount, I think. So mm -hmm. if you just want to make, like, print more money, you know, just cross them over. All right. So is it all of the, the Decepticons and Autobots working together? So it starts off with the Autobots and the Decepticons fighting each other. <coughs> classic, right? This is a kind of a classic, I guess, movie. It's Transformers versus G.I. Joe. Decepticons versus Autobots for first, right? And I think the Decepticons want, you know, to make Cybertron Earth or whatever, Unicron bring back, yeah. whatever, something okay. like, like yeah. that. And then because, you know, the, the G.I. Joe are real American heroes, it's on the U.S. soil, so they, they want to, they're investigating this, this incident, yeah. right? And then, so they're investigating this, this fight, and then they meet up with the Autobots, but you kind of expect them to be like, oh, let's work together. But instead, they fight. The Autobots and the G.I. Joes fight. Right, and initially, okay. because they're at odds, because they just have different conflicts. So in this fight, the Decepticons get away, and they get their plan moving, right? And then, so after the fight, you know, the Joes and the Autobots talk, okay. and then they come to an understanding. And then it's basically just like a popcorn flip where so the, good guys, the good guys team up, and then they fight the bigger. So big, big, action. Cool. Yeah. So big action, Michael Bay. Yeah. No, yeah, not like that. So you want you want like a big uh, popcorn movie? Yeah, big crossover. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have to ask you guys. So uh, Owen, what does your Transformers movie have to offer that the others don't? Because yours looks like all you guys are kind of going more so just on super big action. So I want to know like what makes you guys different? Because all you guys are just summer movies. It sounds like I love the interaction between the Transformers. Mm -hmm. So when we get these three and three Transformers, Autobots and Decepticons, we're gonna see a lot of interaction between these different characters who have these opposing views and opposing sides. Where They've been fighting each other for thousands of years, and now they have to work together to get off the planet. Mm -hmm. So I have Soundwave, who's going to be there. He's going to be leading the Decepticons there on that planet. And we have Bumblebee, who's going to be on that planet, too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have Megatron and Optimus thinking that the other side took them as a prisoner, of, uh, like a hostage. Mm -hmm. Megatron, or Soundwave, is like his biggest, um, his biggest supporter. He wants Soundwave back because he has all these secret files, and he doesn't want him to lose that. And he wants, and obviously Optimus wants Bumblebee back. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, on Cybertron, Optimus and Megatron have to not work together, but work in coercion with each other to figure out where they're at because they both want their both want their people back. Okay, so what is your uh, attack against God, uh, Transformers versus Godzilla? Um, you, I mean, you brought up the point where like, what's the size between the Predators yeah. and what's your size difference? <laughs> Godzilla is a lot. Same? Godzilla is way bigger than Optimus, but Godzilla is the size uh -huh. of buildings. So I'll, I'll scale them. I'll scale them up. Like, but then easily... that's not Godzilla anymore. And no, I scaled the Autobots. But then that's not Transformers anymore. That's that's. Uh, I mean, that's that's just form. That just can transform, yeah. transform into a, a seventy thousand foot big rig, you know. Well, I mean, okay, they're they're essentially technologically enhanced. They're, this is thousands and thousands of years of hit in, in uh, the future, so they progress. Technology advances. So with mine, I think I really, what I really like about yours, I think Boulevard's gonna do is, I want to keep it with. Autobots and the uh, no Decepticons. Yeah, no human characters. No human characters. I, want, I, I can imagine, like, you know, in a trailer, you have some really cool scenes. Imagine you see uh, Optimus Prime with Megatron by his back. They're working together, trying to kill Mothra, trying to kill Rodan. You're going to see the Decepticons and Autobots become one people. That's my pitch. I, I, I love the idea. You're going to see rivals become friends. So for yours, the, the, the Autobots and Decepticons are working together. Yeah, they're, they're that, partners. Yeah, that was yours too, right? You know, we have yeah, to I said so, it first too, that. Yeah. So both of you guys are having the Autobots and Decepticons work together. Yeah, it, it, it's, mine goes all the Autobots and Decepticons working together for yours? No, they're trying to... It's uh, the good, good Joes and bots versus bad Joes. My, my yeah. Transformer is on the planet with the... They're called the Yauchas, by the way, the Predators. Okay. With okay. the Yauchas. Um, they're trying to figure out at the same time why that they were why they were chosen because they've they've seen the predators the yachts before and they've mm -hmm. never they've never been a threat before. Mm -hmm. That's why you find out later on in the film that there's a there's a like a divergent Decepticon who teamed up with the yachts and told them everything about the Transformers and how that you could disable their technology and disable them and where to find them and where to pick them up because the predators are there for the ultimate hunt right. Okay. They want to get the ultimate prey. The ultimate prey at this point is a gigantic ass transformer. 
So they get the help of this. Is it Grimlock? No, it's it's gonna be a new character. Okay, okay. It's gonna be a new original yeah. character sure. that transforms into what like a predator with like the same shing shing. Sure. So we'll get our oh, big is the bad guy. Yeah, oh, okay. we'll get our big fight scenes, and then um, we'll see multiple transformers die within the planet. It'll be just like predators in that mm -hmm. sense, where like they're all being hunted down one by one, and they mm -hmm. have to work together. We'll mm -hmm. have the one uh, Decepticon at the very end, kind of backstab Bumblebee and the other Autobots. Um, but at the same time, we'll be seeing Cybertron, and we'll get to see the interactions between those transformers too. So you did you did a good job painting. Alvin, paint me your movie. Well, for your guys, is they're not able to transform on the Predator planet. That's what you said, right? On Cybertron, they can. They can, but on the Predator planet, yeah, but they can't things. transform on the planet. Or what? I mean, the no, Transformers no. movie, they don't transform. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as, if you just replace those Transformers with humans, it kind of just sounds like a Predator movie. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess technically. <laughs> yeah, and then for for yours. Mine's just like, kind of mine's like Pacific Rim, but good. Yeah, it sounds like a Pacific Rim movie. Where you know, <laughs> shut, yeah, up, yeah. Yeah. shut up. <laughs> All right, if you want to get into his, his is Pacific Rim. Yeah, it sounds like it is, it's Pacific That's Rim. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. The same, but, careful with the court. Oh yeah, yeah, my bad. But didn't you think Uprising was terrible? I want to essentially fix it. I want to have a good Pacific Rim. I didn't think Uprising was terrible. Wait, is my you turn, right? I never watched my turn. Hold on, hold on. I want to hear Alvin talk. Yeah, those are those are good points for you. Those are really good points. Now tell me more about Transformers GI Joe. I think just the the different characters with the Joes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the character of the Joes, right? Snake Eyes, he's iconic, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, really good movie. no, obviously. So you can course correct, yeah. right? Wait, the them. new one, right? Did you watch Snake Eyes? Did you guys watch Snake Eyes? I did. No, sadly. but I'm a fan of Henry sadly. Golding. Yeah. yeah, Henry Golding's good. Yeah, I'm so a fan of him. Just bring back all the characters you established in Snake are you, Eyes. Are you bring anyone back from the original. Jane Tatum. Show? No. Okay, so you cast, it's, you cast it's, the, it's the Henry Golding universe. Yeah, oh, okay. Henry Golding universe. Cool. Um, you can have Cobra in it if they want to work together. It's just because you know it, it is it is Earth. They live on Earth, and the Transformers are trying to take over yep. the Earth. Decepticons specifically. Can I chime in or no? Go ahead. So I think yours is really cool, but I think the two issues with yours is I don't see how the the is it Yaucha? Yaucha. Yaucha. I don't see how the Yaucha can be a threat for the the Autobot, the Transformers. I feel like they're so small, and if you said they have this really big armor, I still feel like. Honestly, the predators are being hunted, and that would have been a cooler premise. Um, Flipping on its head. And, and I, need, with, I need you to address um, the Robert Riz Kaiju, because you are copying Pacific Rim. You are. Okay, we were on time about most original. We said. Uh, I, I don't like it that. Works. It works. Really, so, why would you watch your movie over Pacific Rim? Because mm -hmm. Pacific Rim got canceled. The first yeah. one. Oh, it's old. We're going to have. I want What I want to see with, with my movie is we're going to have Autobots, we're going to have Jazz, we're going to have epic. Sad death scenes. The Imagine Godzilla, because this is essentially taking place after Godzilla just fought Mecha Godzilla. He thought that was his greatest threat. No, it's fucking Optimus Prime. Well, yeah, and no, jazz. it sounds like he just fought Mecha Godzilla. That's a transformer right there. That's a metallic, you know. Yeah, but they didn't do human. enough. They didn't do enough with it. Okay, right. that's good. So um, they had Mecha Godzilla. That's true. Yeah, they I, literally just did that. I, so I'm pitching a story where there's an actual a need for them to interact yeah. with each other. Yeah. I don't see why the Autobots and Decepticons are even on Earth and even fighting these war these these uh, okay. monsters. You know, mm -hmm. they're, 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 not, they're not there to they're not there to protect the humans. Obviously, because he just said they're all destroyed. Yeah. So I don't see a reason for them to be on Earth in the first place and team up with each other. That's just not something that they would do. <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> no, they're <laughs> taking it over for, for Cybertron essentially. The core of, of Earth's magma and, and at that is, point, is, a, is a transformer. Oh, this is, Earth is, this is a closer than okay. And at that point, Optimus still sees these monsters as creatures, as life. He still he would never at that point try and take it over as a new Cybertron. The way the reason that he didn't want that to happen before is because he was humans. Optimus still has a view that all life is precious, mm -hmm. and he would never just go onto this planet to take it over. That's not Optimus. That's just a random robot. You want a random robot fighting, which is cool, <laughs> but you're just pitching big fight scenes. In my movie, there's actual drive for these Autobots and Decepticons to team up with each other. Are they killing the Yaucha? This is as close They're trying to survive. Oh, 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 wrap it up. Wrap at it up. at so this point, you they don't have their yeah. weapons, and they're not able to transform. They're in the, they, they, they are in this new environment. They don't know what's going on. And you're saying there's like this I, big... I don't need you to attack Pacific Rim. I need you to... Uh, I'm Pacific. defending myself. Oh, yeah, okay. I've heard enough of, of I know. Pacific I, was, I was saying that, okay. you know... <laughs> yeah. was, uh, he said there's like a big. Uh, you got to be quick, huh? Yeah. I okay. So there's this big size long. difference. The predators have developed this new technology to be able to fight the transformers with the help of that transformer that landed on the planet before. And we're gonna yeah. get really cool interactions between Soundwave and Bumblebee and all the transformers there because we never see the Aut when we see the Autobots and Decepticons interact with each other. It's always my favorite part, yeah. and that's gonna be the entire movie and when they're trying to survive because we've always seen the transformers as being the biggest thing on the planet, yeah. the most powerful. Now we're gonna see the roles reversed and they're being hunted down and they need to. 
team up with each other to survive. Okay. As for these guys, we're going to get too many human characters, and that's the worst part of every Transformer movie. Sure. I don't understand why the Decepticons and Autobots are f at first fighting each other, and then they're fighting the G.I. Joe. I don't understand why the G the Joes would fight the Autobots in this because they don't but, know that. And at that point, that's the same thing as the, the original time. Transformers yeah. movie, where they're being hunted down by the military in Transformers Three. That that happened on Dark of the Moon when the military was hunting down all the Transformers and they killed Ratchet in like the first five minutes. Can I chime in or is this closing? Uh, so. You can quick. Okay. Yeah, I think with your movie, really good idea, and I, I like the idea that Cobra is working with Decepticons. But I think the issue with it is we're gonna have to wait fifty minutes because you're having. J. Joe's versus Transformers to then realize, oh, we're allies, and then the, mm -hmm. we're allies. So it's going to be an hour gonna, of wasted like time. Where it starts off with them fighting 50 minutes, and then you do the, the last 50 minutes of the good Joe, bad Joe. I suppose, yeah. I think you have to have that setup, though, because you can't just, <clears throat> you can't have the Joes go in and be like, oh, these are the good guys. How do they know that? Right. So is that, no is that my closing? Know. Yeah, you're, you're, okay, you're so very then closing. Alvin, so Alvin, wrap it up to why, uh, why your movie works. So I've, I've already heard enough bad about, um, about, Hammers. Transformers vs. Godzilla, so you don't need to really address that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will say... Mine was awesome. You know, Godzilla has had really good iterations. Shin Destroy, Godzilla... Destroyer. Yeah, all their... Most Godzilla movies are actually pretty enjoyable. Yeah. And then same with Owen. Predator, the franchise is actually really, really good, right? As a thriller and, like, a, just the you action seen, and... You haven't seen any of them, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> you know. Because he's yeah. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying they have <laughs> decent iterations. Whereas for Transformers, <laughs> Joe, this, is, this is a chance for redemption. Yeah. Right? And then what, like, That's the best way to redeem it is just, you know, cross them over. Mm -hmm. Right? I think with your guys is, I, you know, I'd rather just watch the original. Like, adding Transformers doesn't really add too much because, you know, there's a good Godzilla movie out there and there's, like, Predators, the one that came out 10 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. But with... God, or Transformers versus G.I. Joe, I think bringing in the Joes and their values of being like protecting America, like they're really U.S. heroes, right? That's yeah. the tagline. And I think bring, crossing them over with the Transformers is just like, the Joes are out of their element because they don't know, they never had to deal with aliens, uh -huh. right? And then the Transformers are just, they're trying to save, you know, the people yeah. because they don't want it to turn into a Cybertron mm -hmm. or whatever Unicron mm -hmm. to come. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it would be really interesting to have He's the... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it really should just cross these two characters or these two universes uh -huh. over. I, I got your closing. Anime. Yes. Give me a um, so it, movie. It, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go quick because we can pick it up. Um, yeah. The way I see a, a Transformers Godzilla movie, it's a boxing match. It's a, essentially a pay per view uh, UFC fight. You're seeing the greatest titans of Earth and the greatest titans of Cybertron. You're telling me right now you wouldn't, you would literally be there opening night watching no, that movie. I would have to out of out of pride. But I would be very pissed off if that's why Optimus is on the well, planet. Then, I can e well, then we can easily course correct. There's essentially uh, people, uh, a space exactly. colony, space colony, uh, and the Autobots are going trying to find them a home again. And that's when we find the gods. Also, it's a transformer. We don't care about the story. We want action. I, I think I want to watch it. Destroy it. That's that's the end of the round. Right. So I have to say this. I think, Emery, they gave you real, real good points to you that Transformers vs. Godzilla practically is a kaiju movie that is... They, we already had Mechagodzilla in Godzilla. That's a, his is just a horror movie, I, too. Then, oh. then, I understand. Okay. So, <laughs> we already had Godzilla with Mechagodzilla. Pacific Rim had the kaijus already, so it seems a little too similar. So, okay. I think for that, I'm going to say you're out of this, out of this round. So between, I respect that. It's between Owen and Alvin, and I think Alvin had a really good point. A real, a real good jab at Owen, saying that the Transformers vs. the Predator... It, is kind of is similar to Predator, except the humans are just the Transformers; they're just being hunted. So that seems a little, that kind of seems uh, that was a good shot. Um, I, I think Alvin, you did a really good job of pitching me. Essentially, uh, I think you do want like a big Michael Bay. <laughs> you want a big Mi Michael Bay movie, and it felt like it's it is something different. People do want to see GI Joe because Hasbro synergy. <laughs> are, are you right on? No, I'm just I'm waiting. Yeah. Um, I think no. I don't think you guys really had enough attacks to why GI Joe and Transformers wouldn't work. Is it? Because I think our biggest attack was that it involved human characters. But you can still make a good story off because GI Joe is just big buff muscle men. So I think they're not really off story. Bumblebee is essentially. So, uh, Haley Steinfeld was kind of the main. Character. So what's your decision? I'm gonna say I think that round goes to Alvin. Actually. Oh wow! That round actually went to Alvin. That's yeah. yeah. what we'll make the next. That was a valid one. That was a valid one, though. I'd rather watch Godzilla than that. So, that was a valid one. Man, good I, win. I, I did make a good matter, I did make a matter earlier. Good but, win. Yeah, I'm on the board. Bring it out on me. No, no he, he, uh, you guys did good. I think you guys did, you guys did really good. So good we're going to try to pick it up a little bit. So for round... Good, yeah. That was good. That was good. So for, with all these Disney Plus shows coming out, they're they're introducing new superheroes with uh, Doctor Strange. We're getting new, 
new rumors going out for cameos. Yeah. So for this one, we're going to introduce the X-Men into the MCU, and Amber, we're going to start with you. Perfect. And, and Judge, if you mind, I, I brought up uh, essentially a, a teaching, like a tool. A tool you to may help use a teaching things. instrument Thank to help you. change your image. Thank you, guys. So as you guys know, I'm a big uh, X-Men fan. I, I, love, I love the franchise, and I love my favorite character, Cyclops. So just, just to wear this, just to kind of help with the, the illusion, I'm going to have my visor on. If that's right with you guys. So the way I wanted to bring the X-Men is I want to focus on character. And the way I'm focusing on character is we're going to have uh, Cyclops be at the forefront of the X-Men because he hasn't been there for the last 20 years. So we're having Cyclops be back, mm -hmm. all right? And the way my story takes place, we're going to bring the X-Men in after Dark Doctor Strange and uh, uh, what's her name? Scarlet Witch. They have their 1v1. They fuck up the time, right? And that's when we bring in the X-Men. This is going to be with uh, the actual Kinberg verse, or the uh, singer verse. We're going to bring in all of those old actors. And the way I wanted to focus my story on is essentially a story of a father and a son. I think we're going to have essentially, it's going to be a little similar to Messiah Complex Omid, where uh, in the Messiah Complex we're having Cyclops and uh, Sinister and Charles Xavier fight over Hope Summers and, and Cable as well. So I want to have it be uh, uh, Scarlet Witch essentially brings about the existence of mutants like, they were essentially doing a great job of being uh, hidden. Sure. Uh, all due to Cyclops and, and Charles essentially having uh, kept that a secret and protecting mutants. But with uh, Scarlet Witch, she essentially makes it on the forefront that mutants are an issue. And it's going to be a story of Cyclops and Charles essentially having to bring in uh, Scarlet Witch. And uh, if I'll, I'll go to yeah, them. Okay. I'll just give you my title. My title is uh, X-Men Sins of the Father. So we got uh, a Scarlet Witch story and focusing on mainly Charles and Scott. She's only in Act 1. It's, it's mainly Charles and Cyclops, and I have a big twist. Okay. Big twist. <laughs> Alan, give me your pitch. Yeah, I, I, I like the prop. Thank That's you. really cool. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. we went to the car, I was like, oh, you should have brought it. And he was like, oh, I'm bad. Uh, and then he yeah. brought it, so respect. Uh, so give us yeah. your pitch, Alvin. So my pitch is, you know, so when the Eternals came out, it was decent, but I think it had the role of introducing 10-plus heroes into the MCU, yeah. I just think fitting it in a two, two hours, 37 minute movie is just not enough time to develop all these characters. Mm -hmm. So I think it would have, with the, the, the luxury of Disney Plus, right, I think having long form television really helps flesh out characters. So having X-Men be introduced in a Disney Plus show, a 12 episode Disney Plus show, right, and it adapts God Kills, Man Loves, something, yeah. What's okay. the story? Oh, that, is that, that a comic? Or is that your title? So, no, that's the comic. That's the story yeah, line. that's the storyline he's going on. So we got Disney yeah. Plus show, cool. God Kills Man, uh, Mutant Love, right? Man, or man, I have the title. Yeah, yeah you're good. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, Owen, give me a, a quick rundown of what your pitch is. So my pitch is it's kind of similar where it's that same universe with the same original actors. Mm -hmm. But in this one, they failed in Days of Future Past. They failed and they were left with just a few mutants left and they go to the last person that they didn't even know still existed. They go to their version's Doctor Strange. Their <laughs> universe is Doctor Strange. Okay. And in this universe, they ask him, transport us somewhere else. We, we literally, we can't live here. We're, we're dying in numbers. So that Doctor Strange transports all those same characters into the MCU, into a different universe. So we get that same cast with that same story having had lost to the Sentinels of Days of Future Past uh. in this new MCU. Why are you making that face? No, I'm listening. <laughs> in that new MCU universe. So the story is just going to be everyone's, no one trusts these new mutants because they just pop up out of nowhere. It's kind of like the way the blip works, like they just show up in places. They show up and all of a sudden there's these mutants, no one trusts them. We have the Avengers like looking over them to see like what's going to happen. We have them interact with each other. The Avengers don't trust them. And we have the X-Men who are trying to explain what's going on. And at the very end of it, we're going to kind of get like an Avengers versus X-Men kind of thing. Because oh, they yeah. really don't I trust the X-Men. I thought you would. Yeah? So my question <laughs> is this. So are you saying you're casting the original X-Men? Yes. So like you're getting uh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Patrick Stewart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Nice. They're all coming back. Nice. Okay. So Bye -bye, give me my plot twist. So I, I think... Uh, your your story is really cool. I don't even I don't know yet. You haven't pitched any characters yet. We don't know your story. God loves man killed. It's gonna be like WandaVision. Yeah, it's gonna be like WandaVision. It'll be like Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a seven episode yeah, series. It's a ten to twelve. Uh, ten, it's it's ten to twelve. It'll be ten to twelve. You know how good those Disney show plays yeah. have been. It'll be a ten to twelve yeah. season, right? And the one season two of them. It's gonna be a ten to episode, uh, ten to twelve episode series, right? We're gonna get shitty CGI. We're gonna mm -hmm. get them focusing on maybe Clearly two you guys characters. Clearly, haven't seen the Disney Plus shows because I think they have That's a movie budget. They have movie budget. <laughs> they have a movie budget, but they put it all in the CGI. They don't really develop the story. <laughs> they don't develop the story. They it's because they, because it's, they have the episode count is just too small. Plus, yeah. all the ones that came out 
came out during COVID, so obviously there's restrictions yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. I so I, I think the reason why mine stands out so much it's it's a it's a story about a father and a son. Essentially, I, what I really want to adapt it to is I want to build Cyclops to being the leader of the X Men. But what we're gonna do is it's gonna be almost like the astonishing X Men, where we're we're seeing this this rift between Charles and Cyclops, right? And my big twist in the movie is um if you guys have you guys seen uh, Apocalypse X Men Apocalypse yeah I went with yeah, you unfortunately yeah, he did yeah, unfortunately it's yeah, a great movie that was really but, cool. uh, <laughs> so uh, there's an amazing line from uh, Tro- uh from Apocalypse where he's like oh I know you can hear me but still connected okay so what I'm doing is uh, a part of Apocalypse is still inside of Charles so we saw in Dark Phoenix essentially Charles is a, uh, a morally flawed character so what I'm doing is I want to have essentially uh, Apocalypse is bringing about the end of the mutants through Charles. It's, it's very slight. It's not going to be a big thing, but it's going to help us establish this uh, rift between Cyclops and, and Charles because it's going to be an act one where we have uh, them trying to bring in uh, uh, Scarlet Witch because what I want this to show, it's a movie about second chances. With We're seeing how much power Scarlet Witch has. It, it reminds Cyclops, if you know who I mean, it reminds him of Dark Phoenix, uh, of Jean Grey. She wasn't given that second chance. She was seen as a, a threat and as a target by everyone. This but is Cyclops- after Dark Phoenix? So Jean is not a thing? Jean is not in this movie. Okay. This, she's not in this movie. I want to give her a break because I think she's always been used as a plot device. So I want to give her a, a, a rest. Okay. So, so she's not, is she not there or is she just not um, forefront? She's not in the movie. Oh. She, she might come in through a post credit scene. Oh. But the way I see it is if Cyclops sees Scarlet Witch and you know who he sees, he, he can't stop thinking of how the parallels of, of Jean, someone who has unlimited power, who's seen as a threat. And Cyclops is like, no, we weren't able to give uh, Jean a chance, but we're going to bring Scarlet Witch in. We're going to get teach her how to be a mutant and that's how they're building the school but him and, and uh, Charles don't see eye to eye and that sort of creates this big rift so between I, I got I got the like, rift I can got... I give you cast give me a cast right. so uh, we, we're gonna have a, be a Cyclops story you know who we cast a Cyclops is not it you? you we're casting me a Cyclops oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. and, not you and, and I'm, we're doing this jackass stuff I'm bringing my boys in we got Toad and Blob right here <laughs> I would have blocked. I, I got <laughs> havoc. I got my havoc right here. That is my cast with uh, the rest are all the original. Right, I, I don't know what you got to say. Um, oh, and why does the sins of the father not work? I don't think it works because it's not. He's not pitching me an X Men movie right now. He's pitching me a Cyclops solo film. No, I'm not. It's, no, you uh, are. At this point, you're pitching this because uh, I get what you really like Cyclops. I understand that, but you're, we're supposed to pitch an X Men movie to introduce him to the MCU. And the way we have to do it, we have to introduce him to the general audiences, right? People who are, have not interacted with these characters before. True. In my story, not only do the living mutants are they um, transferred over to this new planet, but all dead mutants too. Mm-hmm. What What's the dead mutant that's there? Apocalypse. Apocalypse oh is transferred God. over it's, to the it's, 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 Apocalypse is transferred over <laughs> to the MCU. Because we need a reason for them to really not trust the mutants, right? The, obviously, normal people aren't going to trust them, but the Avengers are more heartfelt. They, they realize that there's good in the world. They see Apocalypse. Why why, why they all of a sudden not trust the mutants? It's because the X-Men, for some reason, we'll find out later, they were transferred over later. Mm-hmm. So that when they get there, Apocalypse has already wrecked, wrecked a little bit of havoc. He's already started fighting with the Avengers. We see that he's killed Tom Holland. He killed Spider Man. <laughs> he's killed Spider Man. He's, uh, he's killed the new Captain America. He's killed big figures in the Avengers. So obviously, when they get there, the Avengers Apocalypse are pissed off. It's not an Apocalypse, X-Men movie. Apocalypse, Apocalypse with other mutants. Other mutants. This sounds like a lot of fun, but it's not an X Men movie. You're saying it is. Tom no, Holland. it is. It's, no, it, it is. Well, we have to introduce it to the MCU. You're forgetting that part of the question. No, You're forgetting well, that we're because mine is, mine's coming through the, the vessel of Scarlet Witch. Yours is having all of the Avengers, and I think that's an amazing story. It is. You know what? You. I say we give it five years. Because, <laughs> yeah, you're saying it's a Cyclops story, and yeah, maybe it is, a little more. But we're going to have Cyclops essentially build the X-Men. I, 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 think, I, I still want to be a good story. I've heard enough. I don't know Cyclops, Alvin. The uh, Cyclops so solo film on an X-Men pitch. <laughs> so, you, you, I, like, I like what you had to say, Alvin. So now, Alvin, I need you to tell me why yeah. Doctor Strange and Sentinels uh, I'm Owen's pitch don't work. I'm fucking even... sick of seeing orange portals, bro. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, oh, yeah. Fiery portals? Like, so, I'm... Yours is the same thing! No, so, no, no, no. Doc- oh, I'm I see, wasn't let, let, let them talk. So, I'm Alvin, why doesn't work? Yeah, so mine is going to be a total reboot of the X-Men and the mutants in the MCU. I'm not going to bring back the Singerverse cast, right? I'm not going to rely on them for the cash and nostalgia. All right, so go for the third reboot of the series. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think that's, <laughs> I think that's necessary for the MCU. I think, so for the storyline that I pitched is... It's not, there's not really a brotherhood of mutants. It's kind of the people's vision, like view of mutants, right? So like Eternals, you know, they, heroes can just show up out of nowhere. You don't need to have them established in the time, like where they were, right? 
so you don't need them established. They could just show up. They're no, no. making a new series. So you have to develop all, all the new characters. That's an issue. Yeah. That's a lot. Not, that's a lot. Not bringing in the old I, actors. You have to develop all of them. Mm -hmm. That's going to take ten years. It is yeah. going to take a while. So I need a long time. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I need a story from you. I, yeah, I yeah we have a story. Yeah, I know their story. I want your story. You're not going to have Magneto. You're going to have in in the comics. It's Reverend Stryker. Oh, okay, you're Reverend Stryker. Yeah. So he kind of. Striker's an asshole. I think it's it will talk about like it will have a commentary on the modern day where you kind of you can kind of turn against people just based on news and stuff. He's mm -hmm. he's spreading fake news about these mutants and stuff. So I think just having uh, Striker as the pro the antagonist of this story, where he kind of skews the views of the general public's knowledge of mutants and X Men. I think that's really um, poignant today. And I think just having you know. I think X Men in itself is an allegory of just like differences, and you know, it's it's very deep. Tolerance. Yeah, tolerance. Exactly. So I think when you get rid of this, like you do the storyline first to adapt it. Like, oh, you kind of establish like, oh, mutants are good. You can kind of show and wrap this into your into your clothes. Yeah, you can kind of show that the X Men are good people, right? Even yeah. though this guy is spewing all this misinformation about, oh, they're freaks of nature. You know, they're this, this, and this, blah, blah, blah. So I think you establish that as the, this is the the groundwork of saying like, oh. The X Men are good people, even though they have like a mut mut mutation. Who, yeah. Which X Men are you focusing on? You're focusing on like the original first class team. So you're doing Cyclops, yeah. uh, Angel, Gene, yeah, yeah, Beast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My turn. Do they, they yeah. both have a chance? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm gonna go into my closing. I think you guys both had great ideas. Problem with yours is you're rebooting all of the actors, so it's gonna take too long to to bring them in. They Mine is I'm, I'm treating it like saying. you know Andrew Garfield. Everyone loves him now. This is a move about second chances. We're gonna bring in the X Men. We'll give them a signature. We'll give them better writers. We'll give them an amazing story. Yours is really cool too, but it's too much. Avengers vs. X-Men is too early. It's like imagine if you want to bring in uh, Captain America and you start with Civil War. That's what you're doing. Mine is an amazing story. And also, I didn't tell you, Sins of the Father, it starts off with an X. And I looked it up on Google Translate. Uh, if you spell X-I-N-S, it still spells Sin. So it's cool. mine is Sins of the Father with an X. You but think X I at what? X I N. If you, if you start sins with an X, it still uh, spells sins. Uh, okay. So that's how it's going to be a great poster okay. for the poster. But I think my story is really good because it's focusing on on the the core values. You're saying you want to be on intolerance. I think we've seen that. Mine's a new story. Mine's a story about second chances because we're interested seeing that apocalypse is taking over uh, Charles little by little. Essentially, that's why he's bringing uh, uh, Scarlet Witch in. He's essentially wanting to take all of these new powers because that was his, that was his ability in the yeah. movie. So I essentially want to see Charles bring in these mutants and doing the exact opposite that he's always done, caring for mutants. And you know who, who lives on past Charles is Cyclops. He's living on that new message. And I think it's going to be an emotional story of, yes, a father and a son. I think when you're bringing the X-Men, we, we have to focus on one character who is building the X-Men around. Essentially, this is a, a pseudo X-Men origin story, but Cyclops is Charles. Okay, he's bringing, bringing the X-Men in, sends the father, okay. and I got my cast right here. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. Cool. Oh, your, um, goes your final. I, I don't want to watch an X Men film where my character is not in the. Whereas it's barely there. You're pitching Cyclops, which is cool for everyone who likes Cyclops, all ten of you. But I don't think it's going to be really great for for MCU audiences because we want the MCU. We want it to continue. If we do that, the MCU is not going to continue with the X Men because no one's going to want to watch it. It's a cool film. It's great, but it's not an X Men film. We have to have a definitive X Men film to introduce them. When I introduce my X-Men into the movie, you're saying it's too early for Avengers versus X-Men? It's not. We know the X-Men. We know the Avengers. We don't need them to interact with each other because if they do, they won't get to that point where they fight each other because they'll be on an understanding. At this point, they don't... We start off with a misunderstanding. Yeah, we start off with a misunderstanding. They don't want to understand each other. The Avengers are pissed off because we have Spider-Man dead and we have Captain America dead, two leaders of the Avengers. Mm -hmm. And they see these new mutants come out, all powerful, with, X with Wolverine leading the forefront. This guy's, this, you obviously know this guy's pissed off. He, he doesn't trust anyone already. And all of a sudden, we have these people, the Avengers, that they, are the most powerful uh, heroes in this universe that he's never met before. Now they want to fight us? No. Now we're going to get an X-Men versus Avengers, and then at the very end, they team up against Apocalypse because they realize that they're on the same side. And for you, for you, it sucks because we don't want a third one. We don't want a third damn re rewatch. I agree. It's a show. All the show sucks. Both of you guys, your villain is Apocalypse. No, it's Charles. It's that Charles. Is, yeah. We've seen him with Onslaught. It's essentially, it's not a, like he's doing a full on Apocalypse again. <laughs> you're I'm, you're I'm bringing back. I'm the X Men one. James McAvoy as the round is over. Channeling Apocalypse. We gotta go. The round is over. The round is over. That was a funny round. That was a funny round. Yeah, I know. This was long. I gotta say this. I mean, I loved your match, I loved the commitment, I loved the Cyclops, the, the visor looked fucking awesome. Just looking at the camera, it, look, it looks really good. I don't know how well you can see in that. It looks awesome. 
You guys all did a really good pitch. I think I gotta say this. I think Emery, they really did get you. No, oh, come on. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. They got you. You pitched as the Cyclops. No, the, the X-Men are still in so. there. They kept saying, "Was it? it's him leading the X-Men?" You didn't. You didn't really talk much. You didn't about talk about. You didn't talk about that. Uh, you were. Oh I, my God! Listen, are you kidding me? Listen, oh listen, no. God. Dude, this is a bullshit. <laughs> listen, listen to you. <laughs> Please, don't leave it. Choice. Yeah, listen, you made. You made an awesome. Uh, MC, you, made, you probably made the best move, but you did not. Do a good job. You I didn't talk it. about the MCU ever. You never did. I didn't. Scarlet Witch. I just, that was such a small part of it. You it's because it's still an X Men movie. I don't the line is over. I don't, I don't need to hear your argument. You don't have to fight it. I don't need to hear your arguments anymore. I'm saying you did an awesome film, but you probably did pitch a, uh, a Psychops solo film because you didn't integrate the X Men into a general audience. That's what Owen had. Oh my. My other answers are shit. I knew <laughs> that. <laughs> but please. Uh, please. I, I give him two points. I made a point. It, it, it's been done before. No, no, it's been done on, before. Say your, say your pick. You can't give. You can't not give it to me. <laughs> I cast it. I have funny like Fuck you. All right, come on. Say your pick. Is it a Disney Plus TV show or is it my movie? Oh, X Men or me? Avengers. Sins of the Father. It's an amazing the, title too. There was one person who did a great oh. job integrating the X Men to a general audience oh to get people God. who don't know anything about the X Men and getting us a fucking awesome popcorn film. You're such an idiot. <laughs> that was Owen. Owen oh did a good God. job. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I it is so bullshit. You know he did not deserve that. <laughs> I did actually. You I did. Think I the he best. did. He, he picked his pitch Cyclops as yourself. Is it excellent? No, I did love. I did love that you played Toad. I love oh, that. Of course you did. That played the Bob and Toad. Yeah, that yeah. was funny. But Owen, and Owen for sure, I think did the best job. He made it essentially a Civil War movie to give us the X Men. Wow, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you did a really good album, but I only I heard enough of what was X Men about it. I didn't get the yeah. story. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get much of the story. I'm so not too familiar with X Men, so I can't. You're good. Uh, that was a great round, everyone. Owen, that was a really good pitch. That Thank was you. really wrong. So, good job, Owen. Thank you. Amber, we love the passion. We did love the passion, but you were very passionate. It felt a lot like the Johnny Cage round. You went. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was actually a legit story. Amazing no, title. It wasn't a father bad. versus son. Are you that kidding me? <laughs> I'm not gonna make it to the finals now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Oh my god. You're gonna argue. You're gonna argue. It is so boring. So, you also had a stupid pick for okay, Star Wars, listen, one, so you'll be fine. So, oh my god. I'm so fucked. So with uh, all all these movies coming out, all everything sequels and prequels, some of them are a lot of sh- shitty stinkers, right? So this question is: What is the worst sequel or prequel movie to come out? And Alvin, we're gonna start with you. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Indiana yeah. Jones, Owen, what'd you yeah. get? I have a uh, Pacific Rim Uprising. I knew it. I yeah. fucking knew it. <laughs> and my, my answer is, is an obvious one. I'm going with Mortal Kombat Annihilation. That movie fucking sucks. <laughs> okay. So, um, give us, uh, Alvin, give us a start on why Indiana Jones 4 does not work. So, Indy 3, it ends perfectly. Indy and his dad riding into the sunset. And then now they just have him you know for no reason kind of just come back there's aliens in this movie for some reason Mm -hmm. it just it felt so out of place in the indie franchise and i know he's always had to deal with kind of supernatural stuff with the nazi like the 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 arc and all that and last crusade um but just bringing in extraterrestrials kind of just like i watched this movie in 2008 when i was nine years old and you know like when you're nine years old you kind of you kind of like everything you just watch everything in front of you but at nine years old i could even tell that this movie was not good i didn't want to finish the movie Mm -hmm. as a kid in theaters yeah in theaters and i was like you know that's a bad sign when you're when you're a small child not comprehend comprehending everything and you still think it's kind of you know it's not good owen pacific room had a lot going for it when it came out it did it did it did fairly well in the box office we have a lot of toys that came out of it we had six series of toys 42 in total different figures that came out we had millions in, in DVD sales. Everyone loved the movie when it came out. When the second one came out, fell short. It was a complete shit movie. We did not get what we wanted. We only got three series of, of toys. And I think the biggest part of the, the, the movie for me was the characters and the the, the, the um, kaijus and the Jaegers. None of us can name a single Jaeger and kaiju from the second film, but I know that we all know a single uh, Jaeger and kaiju from the first film. That's how impactful it was, and that's how <laughs> shitty the second one was. I agree. Your movie, your movie is pretty ass. Yeah. And but it, and I but it, has, it has value. Your movie is very fun because we get to see the mon- uh, Shia LaBeouf being like hanging, with, swinging with the monkeys. That, was a, with the monkeys. that was a lot that, of fun. Is that the only redeeming value? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's an amazing, it's cool. an amazing cool. scene. What? And isn't that his dad? Isn't Indy his dad? Yeah, uh, that's yeah, an amazing yeah. story. You know what? A father and son. So these are a father. <laughs> You're sort of losing me. These are a father. But mine is yours has value. Mine Hitler is terrible CGI, and it came off of the amazing first one, right? They don't even remake the original actors. 
John Cage dies in the first seven minutes. We have a recasted John. We re recasted Raiden. We recasted Sonya. We only have uh, uh, what's his name, Luke Kang and Katana come back. Are you kidding me? And we have shitty uh, fucking lines. It's not even a fun movie to watch. We have like, your world will become my world with uh, <laughs> Shao Kahn. And mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. Like, it's so shitty. Yeah, shitty so you can movie. quote the movie. Because it nice. hurt me. It hurt me that much. Cool. It hurt me that much. Because it you have an amazing CGI. And also, you have, like, uh, John Boyega. He was great in that movie. No, he was screwed over in that movie, too. No, he was cool. He was, like, uh, he was the, the son of Idris Elba. He was a leader. He was honestly awesome. Your movie, it's Indiana Jones. It's a kid's movie. It's a fun kid's movie. You know, you didn't like it when they did the nuke and he survived in the first. Oh, that was badass. That was dumb. That was badass. That was a badass. <laughs> that, was, that was Jackass. That was like an amazing scene. He didn't that was switch. Jackass. Yeah. Was go, watch, go watch Jackass Forever in theaters, guys. Um, I would say for both of your films, you, uh, okay, Mortal Kombat's a cool mil, f film, but we can all agree that it's not the best. I think we all have this nostalgic feeling towards it. So when there was a sequel announced, we weren't there for it, but I think at the time, we, we would have known that it wasn't going to be that great. The first one was good, but it, it's still at the end of the day is like kind of a B movie, video yeah. game movie. We're not going to expect a great film coming out, coming out of the second one. For you, I think that no one thought it was going to be good. We already had the finished trilogy. Everyone knew it was going to be cash grab. No one really cared that it was going to be like the next era of Indiana Jones because they're bringing in Shia LaBeouf. I think that it was a one and done series, and everyone already knew that going into it. For my series, we had a bunch of potential, and we had a bunch of things going for us. We sadly lost Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. During the he didn't it's die, <laughs> <laughs> but he he um he wasn't a part of the yeah. thing, and I think that if you're looking at what's going to be the worst sequel, you have to look at what's the worst lost potential. We finished Indiana Jones. We have a whole series about it. We don't lose anything. We still have in good Indiana Jones films. We can watch that and still feel like we haven't missed out on anything. We still have Mortal Kombat, which is great, and I think that the you, first one made a shit ton of money though, and and everyone loved it. That was like the first amazing video game movie. It was a it was huge hit. I know. I'm, yeah. It was good, but at the same time, I don't think anyone's expecting the second one to be that great. I think at the time, I think they for sure did. I mean, it made a shit ton I mean, of money. I mean, none of us were there. Yeah, none of us were there. None of us were there. But we can see that it held up after 20, 30 years. <clears throat> so, Alvin, they, they both addressed that your movie is kind of like a fun kid's movie. What's your response to that? I watched it as a kid. I don't really remember anything about it. I had right. Fun. Just cause, well, I'll say just because you don't remember anything about it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not good. But so, I, I watched what it. What about it doesn't work? I think just bringing it's so out there, like like you said, he's swinging with monkeys. Who cares about that? <laughs> Who cares that he's swinging <laughs> with monkeys? Because that's like the only point you have about why the f movie is good. That means it's a bad movie. It's the a news. bad sequel, <laughs> right? Even though Spielberg came back, George Lucas produced it, Harrison Ford came back, it didn't capture the same magic as the first three. Yeah, but we gotta see that he was wasn't he a teacher? He had that nice life. He was a teacher in the first three. He was. Yeah, but he was like a re retired. He had his nice life, and then he is got he pulled retired back or is he teaching? <laughs> oh, okay. a retired a retired archaeologist that is teaching. Nice. Hey, yeah. That's what I did. That's, that's good. good. That was, that was like good. A, a, a swerve. <laughs> I saved that, but I think your movie is a lot of fun. Also, we had, isn't there an amazing um, action scene with like? Uh, I can't tell you. I, I don't know. I, there's an amazing so, action scene with like the ants, you. the fire ants. Oh, that, dude, that, that was eat awesome. that one guy. That, that was, was awesome. Also, I remember we had to remember George Lucas. Didn't he direct? Was, did he? No, direct? George Lucas oh. doesn't direct any. Did he? He made it. Did he he produced it. Okay. From he produced it. I know. Spielberg. I know. Indiana Jones is always seen as like Johnny Quest, kind of like a serialized TV show. Yeah. So you see, like Indiana Jones, King of the Crystal Skull, has a cool name. And it's a fun one-off. Like you're telling me, you didn't like seeing Indi uh, uh, Harrison Ford do the whip again, have the hat. He did the slides. He did all the movements. He was the gruff old man. Pacific Rim Uprising. I think you're talking about uh, missed uh, potential, right? That's not the question. It's like at least you can watch it. And you have at least you get to see cool kaiju's. My movie Annihilation, you literally can't see it. It has a four percent Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> what do you guys have on Rotten Tomatoes? I don't know. We don't care about yeah. that. Yeah, so you only like, care about it when it affects your because because it's so low. It's so low that it's memorable. <clears throat> literally, Annihilation is such a bad movie. Memorable. Got... You have it right, right there. What? It's a memorable movie. Whether it's, oh, right. it's so bad, it's good. It is so bad, it's good. And you can quote the movie. You can quote the movie. We still have specific scenes in our head thinking about it. We still know the movie. No one remembers Pacific Rim Uprising. No one cares about that movie. It didn't offend you. Like, it did offend me. Annihilation. It did offend me. Well, <laughs> 10 people. You and 10 other people. No one cared about it. Like, like you said, it's a, no one gave a shit. After people Guillermo was out, no, Guillermo, was, after Guillermo was out, I tapped. I was like, all right, this is shit movie. Know. People what? gave a shit. All right? people, we know people gave a shit because of the amount of toy sales. I, that's always what I'm going to go by. You, <laughs> what, what is it? 
Wait, is it good? Is it money? <laughs> that doesn't mean if the movie's good or like. No, no, yeah. no. I think that's, that's a great way to. It's that's collectors. a great way to understand that there's a fan base for it. The fact that there's still toys being sold today. I have figures that are worth a lot of money, and there's six series of that shit. A lot of people wanted those figures because they love the characters and they love them. They love the yeah. monsters. The kaiju's was yeah. awesome. Yeah. We didn't get so, this. We didn't get that. So I need to hear it from everyone. What about the movie hurts the most of your movies? So, Alan, Wait. what about Indiana Jones hurts the most? What makes it so shitty? Can you come back to me on that? Uh, I'll, I'll, go I'll, I'll, go I'll go first. I'll go first. And also, you're, if you're making the argument on potential, I can let me make that exact same argument. The first one was amazing. We don't yeah, even, see, for we don't even have the camaraderie because MK for, for, yeah, for both of you guys, about family. For both of you guys, don't worry about potential because both of you guys yeah. have potential. Yeah, okay. for, they're both. So the I think when you look at Pacific Rim, at least have amazing CGI. Like uh, Pacific Rim One is really cool, but at least two tops that you get all all these awesome kaiju battles. Literally, Annihilation is dog shit. Literally, the fights aren't even good. You're an Ermac fan, and you probably didn't even know he was in it. I did for like half a second. Yeah, so he was literally in it for half a second. They literally butchered Motaro, Shiva, Shao Kahn as a joke. Oh wait, they made they gave uh, Raiden a fucking haircut, dude. Are you kidding me? They gave him like I a crew, used to love that crew cut with. Uh, so you like the haircut? I, no, I used to like. No, I really you see his, you now see his, his arms. Stupid. You see his arms. They uh, have terrible action. Uh, literally, like they betray everything. Like it makes no sense that uh, you're saying. That the first one, oh, this one's memorable, that's why it's good. And this one hurts so much, and that's why it fucking sucks. Your movie, it's not offensive. It's like, yeah, it was okay. And now it's closing. Yeah, and now it's terrible CGI, terrible acting. And honestly, it's it just it's such a hurtful movie. Because we had the amazing Robin show is Luke King. We could have a whole franchise with MK. And they butchered all the characters. Like, you're having all these cool cameos, sure. You write them off in like two minutes. Was it even worth it? Like, it's, it, it did what the new movie did, but way worse than that. They had like thirty characters in there, and you don't even remember that they're. You don't even remember it. they got killed instantly. It's a shit movie, shit fighting uh, action scenes. Oh, when ties into your closing arms, what specifically about Pacific Rim Uprising hurts the most? And yeah, it hurts the most because we have this cool premise of monsters versus aliens, essentially, with kaiju versus Jaegers, and it was done so poorly and so shittily that we got we got we failed John Boyega again. He, he was given a shitty script. All of a sudden, he's working with kids, and then at the very end of the film. We have these kaijus that we don't even know the names of. We know the names of them in the first one. I do. I know you do. And I know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. I know he does. Uh, like, yeah, he, he does. Uh, Jimsy Danger. It's, okay, but oh, still. Oh, you're talking about the robots. I think you talking about the aliens. No, I said kaiju. You said Jaeger. Oh, I oh so you're talking about the Anyways, okay. we I lose that, that <laughs> factor of it being so memorable and an awesome movie. It was so disappointing because we get to come off this really great Pacific Rim and we get to see how awesome it was. And in the second one, they just fall flat. We get the kaijus back. We don't get a reason for them coming back. We get Charlie Day. All of a sudden, he's a villain in this one. When Charlie Day was the best one in the first one, he was awesome. We get these different aspects of the movie that just suck so bad, and it's just, it's just, it, it, it pissed you guys it pissed me <laughs> off when that came out. I came home straight he, to the He did call us and tell us how much it hurt him. I do remember that. It hurt, remember and then, that. yeah, and then you guys bought me the Blu-ray, and I threw it out. Uh, <laughs> we, we did, we did, we did buy him the yeah. Blu-ray. Okay, so that's your closing Oh, okay, uh, so I want to say something. Oh, you go, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Um, as for Mortal Kombat, I just, I first, personally, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's a fun movie to watch. But <laughs> I think it's a fun movie to watch. You get characters like Jax, who I think is really awesome in that. You still get, are you seeing the shitty fight scenes? I still think they're really fun to watch. It's so cool. Wait, which one? What, Jax versus Sector? No, it's, it's Jax versus Cyrax. But Cyrax. Sure. Close enough. Sure, sure. Close enough, I'll get it. Still, I think there's really cool, uh, there's still rewatchability with that. You can still rewatch the movie and have a good time, I would say. You just have to turn your brain off, which is fine. I think it's okay, because at the end of the day, it's a game, it's a movie about a video game, about a tournament between different realms. Obviously, it's out of the world of, you know, it's a fantasy thing. It's a fantasy at the end. So you can just turn off your brain, still watch it, have a good time, see cool fight scenes. I still think it's cool. Obviously, certain fans are going to be pissed off that their characters were killed off. But people like Jax was introduced. So we have fans that did get something out of it. Keanu might have liked it. Keanu, did you <laughs> like it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I got you closing. Uh, Alvin, uh, close us off, man. Yeah, I think just Indiana Jones 4, I personally can't really say anything memorable about the movie. I need right? you to also think... kind of attack. I haven't heard you say anything about Mortal Kombat, actually. I or haven't Pacific seen the movie. <sighs> uh, what yeah. about Pacific Rim? I saw Pacific Rim. It's forgettable. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun, and the CGI was really good. And the I thought it was really was cool. Oh, right, it was also, the music. I thought, I thought it was forgettable. The first yeah. one was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I know. The first one had amazing music. Who remembers the second one? Who remembers the second one? Alvin said the music was amazing. You keep going on. Thank you. I thought it was interesting that the girl... Kind of made her 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 like a, a ball or yeah. something. Yeah. Was, what? It, it kind of you already forgot. A wall. A wall. A ball. A ball. <laughs> yeah. 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 Remember when the little twelve year old all of a sudden has to save the universe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the best part for me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It was like it. It's a great message. <laughs> back to me. Back to me. Yeah. I think 
it's so like Lucasfilm even knows how I don't want to say bad, but disappointing Indy Four is that they had to you know come back to the franchise and course correct because they know they can't leave Harrison Ford and the Indy character off where Four ended, mm-hmm. right? They have to bring him back because they just the, fifteen seconds. Yeah, the, just what happened in Four kind of soured everyone's um, like Indy's legacy, I suppose. I don't think so he has three amazing films. You don't need to watch the fourth one. Okay, you, you, I like don't you just watch one. the first specific yeah. I like the fourth one. Aliens are awesome. Because it's a uh, you guys are done. Alvin, is that, you know, I'll say you're done. I'm, uh, so your, argu- your guys' argument is like there's first, the first three are really good. That's the Why argument. don't you just watch Mortal Kombat 1 or Pacific Rim 1, right? Like, I don't... You're acting like <clears> it dilutes the series. Uh, you well, have a we're, not series. Opening, we're not opening we're up anymore, finished. So. Yeah. You're saying it's done? We're, we're, we're not. unfished. You're done. That's Mine's that, still that, going right now. We're literally filming the movie that is the end. That is the end of the round. I don't know what it's going to. Yeah. That was a tough one. I don't know either. That was a really tough one. I think you guys yeah. all said what hurt a lot about your movies. Why these movies? Well, all these movies pretty much my suck. Broken. All these movies. My spirit is broken. <laughs> you asked the next question. I did. I don't think I'm gonna make it to the finals. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, this was a tough round. All these movies do really do suck. You said what specifically hurt about you? And I think I'm gonna have to say this. Um, Oh, but I thought a, a really good jab they had to you, which you did kind of say they can watch their own. But I think for the Indiana Jones franchise, at least you have one, two, and three that are really good. And also, I think one of you guys mentioned that they're making a sequel. Yeah, well, so this didn't kill. Said, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> Indiana Jones 4 didn't really kill the franchise as much as I would say Pacific Rim has and Annihilation did for a while. So I'll say for that, I think that's what they had. They but had they, to they keep coming back to the fact that there's three good movies. Yeah. Right? I don't think you can argue with them. <laughs> no, I think you're right. That's a good point. It is. It yeah. is a good point. I think you guys were both. You guys were able to say that. That was a good point. But I think um, for you, at least, since uh, you're getting a sequel, it didn't yeah. really kill the franchise. But this is like most disappointing sequel, right? No, worst. Wor- I said worst. Worst. Uh, worst. worst sequel. Well, so, I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we, no, have yeah, so com- we have a new the, Mortal Kombat yeah, now. So, Just because yeah, the, first three, that. the first three were so good, they had to go back to that point. Whereas, you know, it didn't live up to the three, so they kept going back to the fr- like, oh, That's you true. have three movies. That's yeah. true. I mean, you did, yeah, it lost a lot of the magic. Yeah. Um, Shadow Buff swimming out with the monkeys, that did seem kind of fun, but also it just sounded really fucking stupid. Yeah. Um, and here the aliens. I think, Emmer, you, you, did, you did say some really good stuff. It was really disappointing. 4% of Rotten Tomatoes was really dog shit. Mm. Um, oh, you know wait. you don't care about Rotten Tomatoes. I don't, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think what Owen said that really stuck with me was uh, MK is so memorable, even though how bad it is. And you still get those fun, those fun characters that at least are in it for a little bit. Because in that time, you didn't really get super fan servicey movies. So I think that makes it fun. So I would say, um, I don't, think, I don't really remember you guys saying anything bad up or why Pacific Rim was good. You guys didn't say anything why Pacific Rim was good other than just CGI and boxing. Amazing but. action. That's literally what you just so said. So you think that's yeah. what you said? So <laughs> what I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give that round. I'm gonna give that round to Owen. I think okay. so, <laughs> you did a good, you did a good job, of Owen, of attacking this <laughs> and saying why yours didn't work. This is going to be a very controversial <laughs> for sure. So, uh, so um, we're going into our last round. So Owen's going to the finals. Oh, uh, Amir and Alvin. Or I can so. get a third point. Yeah, you're you're going to go to hell for this. Okay. <laughs> this is really bad. This uh, is You really fucked it. Yeah. So, the timeline's um, broken. You won the Transformers and I won the X. Literally, what the hell happened? <laughs> that shows that you guys get a social network question that you win. Literally. So... <laughs> Yes, sir. And he he said my uh, amusement park question was the weakest one, I think. Ooh. So well, I mean, if you argue, you can argue passion you can't and, argue and passion attack theirs. Don't give up. But let's, let's see it. So round five is which universe deserves an amusement park? And Amber, we're gonna start with you since you're. It seems like your pride is so low. We need to build up your confidence. Yeah, my again. my spirit's broken. Yeah. Uh, the way I looked at this question is, to me, I think the best amusement parks are the ones that are based on experience, not really ones that are based on IPs or. Roller coasters because roller coasters, once you're old enough, like it makes you sick, you can't really go on anymore. So, I wanted to make an amusement park off of Hunger Games. Essentially, I think that'd be so cool to have essentially a real life battle royale. Like, essentially, like imagine a giant laser tag kind of uh, experience. Like, we see how popular, uh, what is it, like uh, escape rooms are, like mazes. So, essentially, I wanted to build an amusement park based off of an experience of a live action battle royale experience where you can have. Uh, you go in with a group of friends like, hey, you have nothing to do, let's go play some Hunger Games right now. And you come out, it's like a cool like 20 minute experience, I think it'll be really cool. Okay, uh, Alvin, uh, what do you got? Um, you're literally describing just Fortnite right there. Kind yeah, of. I wanted to pick, I was not picking Fortnite, but I was mm-hmm. like, oh. It's not one Because of the properties, yeah. but Fortnite's <clears throat> the biggest game in the world. So. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. 
Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So, Alvin, what did you get? Uh, I chose Avatar The Last Airbender, that universe. Uh, mm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What? what, what? Oh. I think there's already a on, uh, give us there, there's a park park? at Disney World. What? No, it's not. It's, no. no, not Avatar. Avatar, Avatar The Last Airbender. Airbender. Oh, even worse. Okay. Wow. Uh, so that's a better answer. Oh, this isn't wow. uh, open yet. Alvin, give your opening. Wow. Yeah, give your opening, wow. Alvin. Okay, so it's, it's just literally Avatar, right? The four nations, you can choose what. So, you, so before you go into the park, you take this test, right? It's kind of like a Myers Briggs test or whatever. And then it kind of, it's like a sorting thing, like Harry Potter, where it sorts you into the nation, whether you're Fire Nation, Earth Nation, Water Tribe, Air, uh, Nomads, right? But the cool thing about this one is you don't have to have the four separate tribes because in Legend of Korra, they established New Republic City in the middle of the world where all benders can live. So I think this will be a very modern interpretation of the world of Avatar where all these people can just come together and live together and then you can see like there's experiences in like different parts of the the city where you know you have a water bending restaurant or mm -hmm. an earth bending you know mm -hmm. whatever right fire bending air bending and i think this this universe has a lot of potential just based on that concept where it's kind of just it, it does play upon the harry potter world trope yeah but it also like this has such a dedicated fan base and also there's no perfect time to now because netflix is rebooting the series well, with so the uh, uh, we're gonna go into it so we got your we got your idea you yeah. pay me a good picture Owen, what did you get uh my universe uh we're gonna build a gotham city recreation we're gonna have different uh diff mm. what are you making that face for and listen good we're gonna have batman uh we're gonna have a batman ride we're gonna have a joker ride a riddler ride we're gonna have different characters walking around like disneyland that they do we're gonna have like we're gonna have people walking around in those costumes it's gonna be fun it's gonna be great we're gonna go back to gotham that's gonna be my amusing it's, park it's really cool but i mean don't they have that at, like um six flags so now you don't have a gotham you're, you're competing with six is it at six flags yeah you're gonna do it at six flags yeah right. so the, the, it is a lot of fun but i think the reason why yours Sucks ass. <laughs> like, like, it's not going to work. It's like, oh, um, yeah, you're having uh, the character to walk around. I'd be like, what, what is there to do other than roller coaster? Like, it, it seems really boring. You like, could go join Batarang. And I, Batarang. You could, like, so I thought of this. It's only one shape. Thought, <laughs> <I> thought, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like that. I actually thought of this the other day. I think it's a really cool idea. I remember the Riddler trophies. At, yeah. Um, and, you remember yeah, those? I love those. Oh, okay, I just yeah. was making sure. I know you remember them, the Riddler trophies. We're going to have daily riddles at the park that change every single day, and then the person that can figure out each riddle gets a Riddler trophy. That's cool. That is really cool, right? But the yeah. problem with that is essentially someone can just spoil it online, and then everyone gets it, and then I don't know how much money you're going to make the park lose if they had to give someone free Riddler trophies every day. I'm okay day. with giving the fans what they want. That's valid. That's, that's, not, that's not going to work. Mine is at least a fun experience. Why is it not going to work? Not, <laughs> no, no, you can't just say things. <laughs> Why is it not going to work? You're, you're going to make them lose billions of dollars. Imagine, uh, like, the, the riddle is justice. Let's say the answer is justice. I can go on Twitter. I can say, everyone, uh, if you're at the Gotham Park, answer is justice, and I get a Riddler trophy. Imagine I get this big of a trophy or... Like this big, uh, it's gonna I'm cost him twenty dollars. That's badass. <laughs> I don't care if the park loses money. We're not talking about what's gonna yeah, be the most successful the, park. We're talking about the best amusement you, you park. You don't, don't care about, about the most fun. You don't care about them losing money, sure. But then guess what? Your park, your park only gonna last for a month, and then we're not gonna be able to get. If it. we're talking about reality, no one's gonna go to a Hunger Games theme. It's, it's, it's a giant laser tag, essentially experience. Then we go to a laser tag. Yeah, well, with a hundred people. Are you kidding me? That yeah, sounds so much fun. Then we go to a laser tag place. With a hundred people, you get to have. Spears, oh, digital I'm spears. I'm why don't we just go paintballing? Why don't we just go uh, airsofting? We have I'm different judge, things. Would you I'm assuming there's more it. than just uh, laser tag. I'm assuming you're giving us a lot more. Yeah, there's going to be a lot, a lot of fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no, 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 just you laser tag. Right? You, you can paint your stuff. Essentially, it's a giant, uh, it's a you giant battle royale. You can do a, a PETA. You can essentially hide. It's like a whole experience. I think yours is going <laughs> to lose shop yours is gonna lose shop life. Honestly, there's not a big enough... Fan base, I think, for the last airbender, there's not enough to oh, do. There is. I would say there's no, a huge fan base. No, there is a huge, but not not for what you're pitching. I don't even know what imagine, ride you would do. Imagine the, the Mine's Oppo, experience. The Oppo ride. You know, there's a ride where you ride Oppo. He's the big. How's any different than Goofy's wild uh, <laughs> school? <laughs> what? Goofy's. Yours is, is no Goofy's, different than Goofy's, Goofy's Sky is. School. This guy is pitching a battle. No, exactly. Yeah. People are doing a paintball. We don't want to do paintball things. People hurt. I will say this: from what I've got from the pitches, it's it seems that you guys are essentially pitching. A new version of Disneyland. It seems like Amir is giving more of like a paintball. So yeah, you guys. My copies, copies don't matter because you guys are pitching. Then why is the Hunger Game themes? What do you? So why do you can do the districts. Imagine you go in there and you're saying, oh, but the most fun part about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios 
is getting sorted into your house. Just like your like 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 no, 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 exactly, but mine is way more than that. Imagine you get sorted into a social class, an economic class, that's, district. That's boring. District no one, one through that. thirteen. You get no your awesome. To get, no you get your awesome attire, and guess what? You are chosen to fight. That's gonna be a huge slap in the face if someone kind of poor goes there and they're like in the. They could live the fantasy of being in District One. So, no, they're going to be in District no, 13. No, it's, it's randomized. randomized. It's randomized. So, so they get District 13 sometimes then. No, but they won't. But also, oh, but what are the odds? What are the It's one of the 13. <laughs> two, <laughs> two people in each district get chosen, but you're trying to bring 100 people together? Yeah, okay, so... So, it's so, so, <laughs> fine, then we'll have it be... And then the fact that you said there's not a big fan base for Airbender, I feel like there's an even less fan they're base. Making, the, are you kidding me? They're making a whole new book series. And you're making a new TV show for this guy. Yeah. But they don't even have the original creators, so it's going to suck. No, ass. they do. It's going to damp. No, no, no. Oh, they, they left. They left. I, no, I think they're still. No, they, they're, they're they really long. They've dipped, dude. Okay. They're even gone. still, he has a way bigger fan base than the Hunger Games. And yeah. the, fan the, and the fan base of the Hunger so, Games. So I want everyone to pitch me the experience. Uh, fan base doesn't matter. It's, what it comes down to is the biggest experience because you, you guys are giving us Disneyland and you're giving us a uh, paintball. I'm giving, so. not, I'm giving it a, a life <laughs> experience. I understand the thing. Uh, yes, I understand. So, uh, what are we going to experience at yours? Because it also sounds very similar to Harry Potter. Yeah, too. I will so say what it is does new? sound similar yeah. to what Harry Potter. What is new? Yeah. Well, when I don't know if there is much you can do new because all these IPs, they're kind of just overlapping, right? The experience mm-hmm. kind of overlaps. Mine's new. Yours is paintball, bro. It's not paintball. It's a, a battle royale. What are you going to come back to? You're going to. Are we closing well, No, no, no. no, no. I'm saying, I'm imagine going I want you to focus on what makes yours experience different. Yeah, Owen, yeah. what makes your experience different? And you got to say what makes your. What is what does your park have to offer? I want everyone to do that. So can you give what us What makes a it really? different is just the IP, right? The, the, oh, the, the, layout, IP. the layout is obviously going to be the same. Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, Six Flags, they're all very similar. Yeah. There's not much you can change when the, the formula is already perfected, mm-hmm. right? So. With mine, imagine just going there. You get the the airbending staff, right? The the one that Aang uses to fly around. Mm-hmm. You can get a Momo or like the the monkey, right? <laughs> you can Momo. Just, yeah, you can just be with. You can people. go to Toys R Us. Where's Toys R Us? They got bankrupt like four years ago. You can bro. go to a toy store. You can literally go to Target and get a Momo. You okay, can get, we can get Nerf guns. Where, where's yours? yours? No, mine's not a Nerf gun. It's a life experience. <laughs> You're saying paintball. You just keep saying paintball, paintball, paintball. What is paintball this? Fucking hurts. Okay, I'm never going to end this life experience. experience. Hmm? And and the life of what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing? Life of and I need you to take this seriously. I, I am. I understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Yes. I don't understand what is part of this. Is. Li- I want to imagine an escape room. room. It's like you you tag your friend. Escape room? Yes. Is it, it, nerf guns in? No, not ner- it can be nerf guns. It can be a lot of fun. The way <laughs> it's like you text your friends like, hey boys, let's squad up. Jeez. Let's go to Hunger Games. Let's Hunger Games. Like not like not as a joke. Like I'm serious. This can be a lot of fun. Like imagine the four of us squad up. And like, oh shit, Alvin's down. Alvin, paint yourself like PETA. We'll run over to you. It's like a, a real legit experience. It's something new. And if it fails, it fails. But at least it's something new. You guys are literally the Disney, Disney-fied worlds where it's like, oh yes, you're taking a, a Warner Bros. IP. You're just selling. You're just selling toys. You're just selling the exact same shit we have at so, Six Flags. I need you to. I need to ask you this, Samir. Why does Batman not deserve the theme park? Because we already have it. Like. It's so boring. Like, what? You're just going to treat it like... It's boring to go to Gotham City. What, what are you going to do Gotham City? Am I just going to get mugged when I go to Gotham City? Am I paying them $100 maybe, to get mugged? Maybe it's yeah, experience. that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm going to get killed. You come in with Gotham money. I'm going to go to Crime Alley and, and you're never coming out. Thugs. <laughs> you're going to have Joker Put your hands up. Yeah, and, and get in my wallet. <laughs> get in my wallet, go down Crime Alley, and I'm done for. Yours is a lot of fun, Alvin, but I still haven't heard the experience. I'm just hearing merchandise. I, I do need, You're uh, looking yeah. at the business side, and that is a lot of money. That's cool. You, but guess what? We'll open an Amazon store. Amazon <laughs> store. We'll sell stuff there. Wow. Yeah, mine is the least an experience. And, and you know, if it fails, it fucking fails. Why are we talking about mine failing then? No, you're, you're, you're going to fail. Why, why is mine? You're, you're gonna, gonna, is that technically not a failure then? <laughs> no, because it, if no. yours fails, it fails. But if mine fails, then it's a shitty idea. <laughs> My, at least I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a chance. You're not. You're just, you honestly. Uh, you, I think you, 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 you think keep that. pitching this experience, it's a life but experience. you're not giving me anything new. <laughs> you're what telling, are you? You're not imagine you take the life of someone. So you're, you're, you're not. You're you're advocating advocating people. Killing and no, murdering? I'm going to don't murder them. No, like, you're oh, shooting you're, them with a paintball. You know, everyone has a life bar. Everyone has a vest. You have a life bar. Okay, so I have a laser tag. It's a laser tag, but a grander experience. Okay, javelin grander. You, you, you can, can you can it's a whole you can hide in water you can literally hide in you in, can hide in water yes it's with a whole the vest that's electronic yeah there's waterproof technology your phone's waterproof 
No, it's not that bad. Not that water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or you have the old, you have the old iPhone. So but, I, heard, I heard enough about um about uh, and we can sell merchandise. We can have Katniss Everdeen. So you're gonna we, sell merchandise, but he's being shit yeah. on for having. Well, no, you, no, you just keep saying you're, yours is only merchandise. And no, you I guys are worried about it being experience. I said Opera Ride. You can go on Nala or Naga. Yeah, that's, that's Gooby Sky Dark. School. My, mine's but, actually legit. <laughs> amusement parks, amusement parks already. They already perfected the, the formula, like I said yeah. before. So I'm going to use the skin. Yours is a DLC skin. Mine is a DLC skin too. Yeah, We're all DLC skins. Mine's not. Mine's an experience. Yours is literally how many games laser like tag, action. bro. It's later to have a, to gra- a grenade, javelins. Like imagine how fun that would be. You're telling me you wouldn't want to go into Hunger Game right now, Hunger Game right, and I, murder I, the two of us? I know you probably would right I, now. No, I think I we would go into this land and I'd be like, I'd rather shoot a paintball gun. Yeah. But paintball guns hurt. Okay, then you I'd, have rather go, I'd rather go laser tagging at a regular place. It's not going to cost me thousands of dollars. You okay, I'm taking that as your. I'm taking that as your closing. Yes, I'm taking that as your closing. Uh, Oh, I need, I need, I need to know what what your uh, par- uh, park has to offer that's new. Mm-hmm. I want something new. I don't want Disney. You know what's new? Sorry, Alan. having the Batman. <laughs> well, that's what we get. We get I, the I, don't want, I don't want to focus just on the IP because I think uh, that was. One, I remember focus on the experience. Give, give me uh, what the experience is. So Amber said yes. You can kind of have a big battle royale. You can hide under the water, paintball, uh, fight with your friends, squad up. What is your park? Why would I go to your park over Disney rather than IP? Great question. That was a good question. Yeah. Um, I want to circle back to you. One more no. time. Why are you fighting me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already in the finals. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I think what's going to be different about my Gotham City Batman park is that we're going to uh, we're gonna have Batman. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you're fine. I don't know. I don't give a shit. Alvin, so it's between you and Amory. What yeah. does your park have to offer that's new? I don't want a Disneyland... Want a new experience? What does it have other than the IP? There's not much you can do. I, you keep going back to something that's new, but there's not much you can do that's new because if it was, if you if you wanted something new, it already happened, right? They well, Amber's giving us a new kind of amusement park. It's not an amusement park, bro. It's just like a field where you just that, run around. That is but true. That's not an amusement park. It's a whole dome. Isn't one ride. It's a whole dome. It's a whole dome. It's not just a field. It's a whole dome so with different lose? terrain. You leave and then you're done for the day. It's like Fortnite. Yeah, you, you squat up. Like, I right, just play Fortnite. But it's live <laughs> action. You Who keep cares? saying play Fortnite. You this keep saying play Fortnite. This does not sound fun. Then essentially, what you're saying this is, is, is the exact same argument. Yeah, I've heard your argument. Your argument. I've heard enough. It's a movie. I've heard enough. I can watch a movie. I've heard enough of you, Alvin. Yeah. So, also with this, with the Avatar thing, I think. You can kind of tie it into the series and the story where Korra kind of left it off where she kind of ties the spirit world with the avatar world mm-hmm. or the, the real world or you know whatever so i think it'll be interesting to actually kind of have those spiritual creatures and kind of uh expand the lore from legend of Korra, where you can have you know a new avatar show up in this city because it takes place years after the these two series right you can kind of just expand the lore basically just through this thing it's kind of like star wars where it's just more immersive yeah, 10 seconds. Yeah, it's more immersive than... Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that'll be the end of the round. So that was a tough uh, that was a tough final round. I think you... Uh, uh, it seemed like you guys were kind of sweating a little bit, not knowing what to... Uh, it, it, seemed, it seemed a little hard for you guys. Yeah, I, that was like good. I didn't know what he was talking about. Who did it? You. I did. I was the one that had a picture. But so I will say this. So I think... Uh, oh, and I did like how you said the, the red, red trophy. That was really interesting, but I mean, I had a good jab at it saying, oh, one person can spoil it, kind of ruin the whole experience, and it sounded... Mm-hmm. To me, no one really brought this up, but it sounds very similar to Mickey ears. So that's what it was like, the hidden Mickey ears, right? That's kind of what it's similar to? I have no idea what you're saying. For Disneyland. No? Okay, well, no one brought <laughs> it up, so don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had Gotham so City rides, different characters. Uh, I mean, they did get you with the 13 districts, and you put a poor person in the 13 district. That would feel a little I said weird. one. And I'm saying, but the randomized, I'm, I'm just... I'm just yeah, like, really let's say I have a poor person in their district 13, right? They have a 12 out of 13 chance. Yeah, I just didn't to discuss. Uh, Alvin, uh, Am- uh, I guess you did also mention it too. Yours is very similar to Harry Potter and Disneyland. Yeah. So I think the way I, 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 I like this question was I wanted something new. I wanted a new experience. You guys were giving us very much like Disneyland. Disneyland or Universal Studios. Wow. So I, I saw it between then the Amir. Don't ask for a pitch in an amusement park. Yeah, it's an amusement park. It's still, you can still an amusement park, but it needs to be something new. What would you do? What's different? a new music? What would you do different? This is right, a music. What's, what's something if you want? Halo. I would do Halo. Or like, what would you add and innovate on top of like an amusement park? What do you mean? <laughs> you're you're <laughs> asking for something new. Yeah, something new. <laughs> something new. You would add to already the like the already established formula of an amusement park. So I, 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 no, 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 no. What would yeah, you? I would be Halo. My, my yeah, yeah, Halo. What would you? Your new thing be? 
already <laughs> have an idea. So, yeah, so the, the, way, the way you make Halo unique, unique is essentially you suit everyone up, they get their Spartan suit, and they get a oh, fight so in the war. Like the Hogwarts. Yeah. No, you but they get their the Spartan outfit. outfit. That's, that, that's not new. That's all right, all right, all right. All right. I wanted, I wanted something that was new to one paid yeah. me an experience, and this person... He should have asked for He was crumbling a little you bit, can, but... You can, no, give it to Alvin. I think he had a better answer. I think... Alvin. No, I wanted a new experience, and I think... You can um, give it to Alvin. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he had a good answer. Uh, you can give it to Alvin. It's fine. Well, no, I'm, uh, I'm not do that. I'm not... I'm not going to go off. I wanted it off a new experience, and I think, at least for Amir, your, your, your answers were... They were, they were make, giving good jabs at you, but I think at least you gave us something new. That was the reason why you don't want to go to Disneyland. Man. At least for you guys, it was like, oh, you're just giving us Disneyland or, or, or Universal. So it's, it's a controversial, but I'll say I'll give it to you. At least it's very controversial. I've never heard of an amusement park with one ride and it's just yeah. laser tag here. Just one dome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. All right. You, you, know, you can give it to Alvin, that's fine, because that, that, was, that was an all right answer. That was, a it, it, that, that was, that was that's what I picked. It's, I want something Too new. Too late, solidified. Yeah. I want this something is an upside down round for sure. A match. Mm -hmm. Crazy match. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, that, you, you did really good album, I just wanted something new, and I think at least you gave us something new. It's an upset. Wanted yeah. something new. Yes. But he asked for an amusement park. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, wait, what, what, what do you mean? So, uh, are, so, uh, you, you did really good album, and maybe it's an upset, but I, I at least like the idea of something new. The word new is lost. <laughs> 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 um, what are you talking about? So it is what it is. Um, <laughs> Owen and Amir are in the finals. Alvin, you did really good. Yeah. Maybe maybe it is comfortable. Right. Maybe watch it back. Maybe maybe yeah. it feels a little raw. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was. Thank you. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> we already know what happens. Speed round. So we're going into sudden death. So three um, rounds. Right? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was five. Yeah, it's only like 30, 30, 30, 30, 90 minutes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's only like a movie. Yeah. So, uh, we're doing the speed round. You and I are in the speed round. So, I'm going to give you guys um, I'm going to give you guys two choices. Pick whichever one you guys want to fight for, okay? Before the question, right? You uh, you can answer however way you want. But I'm just going to give it to you. I'm going to give you guys two choices. Pick one of them. Okay. Oh, okay. Which one is better? Okay. Iron Man trilogy or Thor trilogy? Iron Man. Thor. Okay. So we're going to do 30-second uh, intros into the model. Yeah, I don't know why I chose Iron Man. Yeah, me either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just give me my head first. Uh, Owen, uh, ready when you are. Hmm? Want to re-speak? Iron Man was a great definitive MCU film that brought everything together and started everything. It was John Favreau's uh, first MCU film, and it was awesome. It started the whole franchise. I know that there's like some talks of like Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3 were like weren't as nearly as good and they couldn't live up to the potential but I think that they're still really good films and they're still better than a lot of MCU films like Dark, like Thor the Dark World and the first Thor actually um, I would also say that it was a good arc for Tony because he found a way to actually like get rid of this like fear that he had in Iron Man 2 and in Iron Man 3 when he gets rid of the, the one heart and he, he okay, like 30 Amber okay so the way when I look at these two trilogies I think to me, the most important thing is about the main character. Character, I want to see how they evolve over time. And you see with Thor 1, we see an arrogant Thor, who's an asshole, who's conceited son of the king, right? Who's not ready to become king. And then we see him over time, he becomes worthy. And then he, after spending time with humans, he becomes, he becomes like us in Ragnarok. I love that. And yet, I had uh, Thor the Dark World, not the best movie, but you had two stinkers. You had uh, Trash Iron Man 2, and you had Trash Iron Man 3. With the Thor universe, at least we get three awesome movies that have all of a separate feel. We okay. have Taika Waititi, this, one movie. Uh, Owen, 20 second rebuttal on why uh, Thor trilogy is worse. Thor is only one good movie out of the trilogy. We can still rewatch Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3 and like parts of the movie and still enjoy ourselves. I like uh, Tony Stark's interaction with the little kid in Iron Man 3, I think it was. That was an awesome part where he didn't have his suit and he was kind of left alone. Left alone to fight against the, those other mutants without his powers. We kind of see him vulnerable. I don't think Thor is any good in Thor 1 and Thor 2. No one remembers the Dark Elf. No one knows the Dark World. Thor 1 is okay and it was worse okay. than Iron Man 1. And our 20 seconds on why uh, yeah. Iron Man is Yeah, okay. Iron Man 1 is the only good one in that. Yeah, you're saying the, the kid. That was all so shitty. With uh, Ragnarok, we had literally top five MCU movies. We had the Brotherhood. Because it's honestly a story of brothers. It's a story. It's a tale of Loki and Thor. That's what I see. Seconds. That's how I see it being uh, an amazing one. Thor, uh, Iron Man is just essentially him cracking jokes and being, being an alcoholic. The only story he learns is that, oh, I'm a shitty piece of... Uh, Owen, give us a closing on why you think Iron Man's better. How long? 20 seconds. Okay. 
if we're going to argue what's better than Iron Man 1 and Thor Ragnarok, then we're not arguing the question. The question is the franchise, the trilogy. I think that Iron Man trilogy is much better than your trilogy because I'm never going to watch Thor. I'm never going to watch Thor 2. We could watch Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3 because those are still good films. They have really bad moments and they're not as good as Iron Man, but they're still good films. No one's going to watch Thor 2 because it sucks and it, it painted a horrible picture of Thor and it was super boring. Thor 1 is the most generic Netflix. Marvel movie ever. Okay. So I would say Thor 2 and Iron Man 2 are equally bad, right? So it's one, uh, one to one. So uh, Thor 1 is actually really amazing because we have Kenneth Branagh. He, he he makes Asgard feel real. It doesn't just feel like a another one in the mill uh, MC movie. Ragnarok's amazing. We have uh, Taika Waititi. He essentially is responsible for Phase 3 of, of Marvel. He essentially crafted the whole new world. And we had an amazing metaphor. Asgard is not a place of the people. I love that. There's nothing good in here. That was a good round. Alvin, I'm going to come to you. What do you think? I think Owen had the better argument. I would agree so too. I think Owen got that. I think, um, I think Owen got you with essentially just that, like Thor two is almost like unwatchable. And you had a good idea that uh, Thor Ragnarok kind of helped in, uh, bring in the new genre, but I think that goes to Owen. Fair. So that was good. Mm -hmm. So three to two. The next question is going to be. Um, I'll, I'll say that. One for, uh, actually, I'll do it right now. Uh, what is the best superhero origin movie? Spider Man one. Batman Begins. So uh, this is actually uh, one of the things we call as a trick question. So we're gonna argue it is now. Um, wow. And you're gonna say that Batman Begins is a better superhero origin movie, and and oh, and you're gonna say it's Batman one. Oh, so he, I, I took his answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, that's fine. So actually. you have Batman Begins, yeah. oh, and you have. Uh, that's way better. Sorry, one. Are you out movie shit? Okay. Um, so I'll start with Batman Begins. Uh, Batman Begins is an amazing story because that, that's what leads us into Dark Knight. And there's an amazing line from Thomas Wayne. Why do we fall, Bruce? We fall so we can pick ourselves back up. It's an amazing story. It's the story of Bruce and his dad seeing how he can become the Batman, how he can become the protector of Gotham. Spider-Man 1 is fun, but it's also a shitty, corny <laughs> Spider-Man movie. Yeah. With uh, Batman Begins, we have amazing action. Chris Renault, the greatest director of Ten our seconds. time. Greatest director of our time. And we had an amazing race from uh, Liam Neeson. We get to see the League of Shadows. You've never seen that before. It's a comic accurate movie, it's a fun movie, but it's a dramatic movie. Okay. Spider Man 1's ass. Owen? Why is Spider Man 1 the best superhero origin movie? Spider Man 1's the best superhero origin movie because it, it really encapsulates the perfect Peter Parker and the perfect Spider Man we want. We get un Uncle Ben's famous line like, um, Do you want to say it for me? No, I'll be saying it. I don't even know what it is. Say it for me, bitch. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Anyways, he says that. With great part comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah, no, I no, yes, I did. I wanted you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's a great movie. It's a great villain. Yeah, I don't think it goes nearly as good as Green Goblin's performance in that one. We get we get um, James Franco as Harry Osborn. We get these great characters. It's really great. Sam Raimi does a great job with it. It's a great score. It's awesome, and it really encapsulates what it what it means to be Peter Parker. We get the true definition of Peter okay, Parker so, and the true so, definition so. of an origin. Twenty seconds, Sam. You're uh, really going on watching. Yeah, two, Spider yeah you're, you're arguing Green Goblin. It's not about the best uh, villain. It's not about the best superhero origin. And I think. We get to see Batman at his lowest. We see him almost kill someone. He almost killed Joe Chill. He almost became exactly what he hated. That is an amazing emotional arc. So yeah, Spider-Man, we get to see him. He was responsible for Uncle Ben. We've seen that so many times. You've read it so many times. With uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, Batman Begins, we Five get to seconds. see a true dark take on the character. And it leads us to the greatest movie of all time, Dark Knight. It's not even okay. comparable. Owen? 20 seconds, why does Batman Begins not work? Both of our films are very comic accurate uh, superhero origins, but I think yours doesn't work nearly as much as mine because mine feels like a superhero movie. We feel like we're in this universe with Spider-Man and he feels like this, this, uh, this friend in the neighborhood guy, friend in the neighborhood Spider-Man. Your movie still feels like it's this big budget action film where they, where they put in this billionaire. Five seconds. Where they put in this billionaire to be the superhero, which is really cool, but it does nothing different than Spider-Man does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amir, last, uh, last 20 seconds on why you think uh, yeah. Batman gets better. Yeah, you said it feels like a superhero movie, and I think that's the problem with Spider-Man. It gets encapsulated in just being a superhero movie. Batman Begins is an amazing movie because it's also a drama. We get to see not only the amazing relationship he has with Alfred, but with Rachel Dawes. Essentially, we get to see him become that playboy of philanthropist who, who has to, it's an act. But we get to see it at the core of it. He's just a little boy that's scared, who loves the girl next Five door, seconds. who is uh, Rachel Dawes. MJ's not even comparable. MJ is a piece of shit. Uh, love interest. Batman Begins, amazing storytelling. Oh, and last 20 seconds on why uh, Spider-Man went there. Every good superhero needs a good villain. And I don't know why you're saying that Green Goblin can't be encapsulated in the same argument because it's still a superhero origin film who needs his origin villain. Green Goblin was a perfect villain. We saw how he was connected to Peter Parker before he was the Spider-Man. We see this emotional connection between him and him, uh, him and uh, Harry because the, he killed his, he literally was there at his father's own death. So we see at the very end that he's there at his father's funeral knowing what he knows. So we know that Peter Parker is the greatest Spider-Man and he has the greatest villain. Mm, okay.
That was a good round. That was a really good round. It was good seeing uh, Aaron go, saying that Brian White is a piece of shit. And I know. I, I was happy he said it. That was good. That, that made me really happy. Uh, Alvin, I'll come to you. What do you think? Who do you think won that? That was really tough. That was a good that round. That was really good. That was a really good, that was a really good round. Damn. Uh, I think Amir still had pretty good arguments for Batman. I think it's good. Me, me and you are honestly lining up. I think yeah. Amir did really good. You did a great job of uh, Batman's origin, becoming almost Joe Chill, becoming what he hates, almost killing. That was really good. So that one goes to Amir. So now it's 3-3. Uh, and we're going to our final round, and, and uh, this is my final question. Do you think, what do you think of this? Me? Or, or, do, you, do you know those movies? I, I know, but I, hmm. Do you have any other questions? Or <laughs> if, if, you have, if you want, you can ask a question if you want. I, I was going to go with this, but... You can go with it, yeah. You think so? I've, I've never seen this. So okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so since uh, you haven't seen this, but maybe your work is a good uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. test. Unbiased. Okay. Yeah. So for the last one, too, I'm going to give you guys again two movies and tell me which movie is better. Okay. Prometheus or Alien Covenant? Alien Covenant. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. Prometheus. Okay. Okay. Damn, I haven't seen that in so long. I know. <laughs> damn. Oh, first, huh? Yeah, you're going to oh, okay, okay. you are. Alien Covenant fixed everything that Prometheus did wrong. Everyone wants the uh, Xenomorphs to come back, and everyone really liked the way that it, uh, it kind of teased it in Prometheus, and that was the best part of the movie, is when they teased what we're looking for. Ridley Scott was trying something new, but if he's going to try something new, do it in a new film. We wanted to get where we wanted our Xenomorphs, we finally got our Xenomorphs. We got a really cool horror film, we got to see really cool gruesome deaths, we got to see the origins of the, uh, the engineers and how, uh, I think his name was Walter, or um, one, of the, one of the androids, basically Michael Fassbender, one of the droids, how he killed the engineers, and we got to see how dark he goes into creating this new life, and you're trying to create the Xenomorphs, okay. and it's an origin story of the Xenomorphs. The problem with Alien Covenant, it's, it's trying to be a Prometheus movie and an Alien movie, and it fails at both. The problem, what's amazing about Prometheus is it's essentially a, a side movie that builds on the lore. We always want to know where the, the uh, Xenomorphs came from. And we also do get an amazing, I believe his name is like Tom or something. Michael Fassbender is amazing in Prometheus, and that's why they brought him into your movie. But we get to see the whole new lore. With the uh, Alien Covenant, you have all these actors who are completely Fantastic. wasted. James Franco's wasted. Billy Crudup's wasted. Please in mind, you have an amazing villain in uh, Charlie Theron. You had uh, uh, Michael Fassbender. Yeah, it's a great sci-fi movie. Okay. <clears throat> oh, and 20 seconds of my Prometheus does not work. Ready when you want. Prometheus doesn't work because they're still in that alien universe. You say that we're trying hard to be alien in Prometheus, your movie does that worse because you're actually trying to be in part of this universe. Prometheus really wants to be its own thing, but it can't in this universe. It can't be its own thing when, Ten it's, seconds. when it's in the same universe as the Xenomorph. You can't, you can't tell the fans that they're going to get the origin story of humans and the Xenomorphs, and at the very end you tease a film that's actually going to show that. The better film, I would say, Alien Covenant, when you actually get the answers you're looking mm -hmm. for. They didn't give us any answers. Right. Amber, uh, 27 to why Alien Covenant does not work. Uh, Prometheus is an amazing metaphor about man playing God, right? And in Covenant, it's essentially them trying to recreate Alien One and Two. And if you're going to do that, just go watch the original. It, it fails at becoming the original Alien. Uh, Ridley Scott had to essentially abide by the fans because they uh, hated Prometheus when they didn't understand what it was. It was something new, and they didn't like it. But it's Watch something it. that he took a chance on. Alien Covenant is all of the old stuff that we've seen with terrible CGI. We want to see it done practically. Oh, and your last twenty seconds on why Covenant is better than Prometheus. Alien Covenant did everything that it wanted to, and we actually got our answers. Like I said, we left with questions in Prometheus. That's not the way you should live. That's not the way you should live with a movie where you not you don't feel satisfied leaving the movie. And our movie, you talk about playing God. We actually play God in Covenant when he creates the Xenomorphs. You see the different embryos that he created when he was uh, breeding different things within this black sludge. So he actually does play God as an android. Ten and seconds. I think it's even cooler that we played God as this android, and this android in turn creates this new life Five form. Five seconds. And at the end of the day, it's a great horror movie. We get we get badass kills. We get badass xenomorph kills. We get to see uh, fucking the guy from Tropic Thunder. The we got to. We got to. So I mean, I give Owen thirty seconds. You're gonna your last thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. Really sell me on why for me this is better. The reason why Prometheus is better is it has something to say. It has something to say about man playing God. And you're saying, yes, uh, Data or whatever, try to do that. It doesn't work because it's, it's, it's in the back. Daniel Bride doesn't work. You have all these cool actors and they try to make it a, a horror movie but also a comedy. It does not work. It's, it's uh, 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 tied up. It doesn't work. With Prometheus, at least it's a sci-fi movie that has something to say. We get to have amazing lore. We get to have the engineers, something that we've never seen before. We get to see the protomorph at the end. It is an amazing, Five seconds. It's an amazing representation of the, the xenomorphs. The problem with yours is trying to be the old movies. It's not even practical. You don't, when you see the Xenomorph, it wants to be done real. Okay, and that is the end of Sudden Death. Alvin, I'm going to come to you. What do you think? That was really close. Um, I think Amir had a stronger second argument mm -hmm. than Owen did, but his first argument, he kind of 
instead of explaining why Prometheus was good, he kind of explained why Alien Covenant wasn't good, like was bad. So That's I think true. Owen had the stronger overall argument. You, so you would go with Owen. I'll go with Owen. Okay, so that's interesting. So, yeah. uh, Owen, who do you think won? <laughs> Money. <laughs> I'll be that. <laughs> no, I'll say this. I think you guys did both. You guys did both really good. I think Owen. Uh, it's like I don't know if you watched Alien Covenant a while ago, but somebody got a, a pretty strong remembrance of what the movie was about. Mm -hmm. So I think you were talking about. You talked a lot about the lore. I think Emmy, you were a, a bit much on the um, uh, pro that Covenant is trying to be the originals. I feel like that was the only kind of thing you had against Covenant. Mm -hmm. I think you're. You, I, th I think I'm gonna give it. Uh, it's. Great thing, I think Owen, Owen gets this, I think Owen gets this point. Mm -hmm. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Uh, that, that was a long, that was a long Good match. Game. It was a Good crazy game. one. Uh, Owen, you did, Owen you. you did good. Owen, you did really good. Alvin, you did really good. Mm -hmm. Amory did really good. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe uh, you guys felt jipped on the last one. Maybe for the question, it felt like it wasn't clear enough for the amusement park. Maybe I could have worked better on that to make sure, so you guys had a better understanding of it. But, um. <laughs> You guys did really good. I think that was a, it was an awesome round. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of fun. For I got sure. two wins, two and zero. It was it was a lot of fun for sure. That we had really good questions, uh, funny moments for sure. So mm -hmm. I thought it was a good episode. It was really good. Come back next week to see me win a third one. <laughs> that was a good game. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Peace.